Hey guys, if you enjoy the Drunken Peasants podcast, be sure to go to audibletrial.com forward slash Drunken Peasants to get your free audio book. They have books like The God Delusion or Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King. Also, 150,000 other titles to choose from. So be sure to check that out. It supports the show and you get a free audio book in the process. So what the fuck do you have to lose? Tacos. Live from the frigid armpit of America, this is the Drunken Peasants Podcast with Ben and TJ, bringing you opinions of the news from an altered perspective. Fuck it! Say, man, you got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. I don't have facts to back this up. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, atheist? You know, it's okay. You're nothing, okay. TJ. You're garbage. It's okay. I just want to be light. You're fuck garbage. Up. <laughs> and now, here are your hosts, Ben and TJ. We're we'll we'll doing live. We're doing live. Fuck it. Doing live. Welcome to the Drunken Peasants Podcast, where we DP the fuck out of the news. And I just realized that I'm not on camera, so I'm going to fix that. There we go. I am Satan. How are you, TJ? I don't have to answer that question. Yes, you do. So, uh, TJ and Scotty were having a heated debate before we went on the air. Well... By the way, we started recording for iTunes today, and for each episode that we're going to post on iTunes, we're going to record a short few-minute segment that you'll only be able to hear if you download on iTunes. So it's a little extra. So it's just to make up for the fact that you won't be able to see the video if you download the audio. Sure. So, But we're not on iTunes just yet. No, but, but soon. It'll soon. be soon. Imminently. And that's thanks to your Patreon donations, yes. by the way. We reached the five thousand dollar mark and beyond on Patreon. Uh, Patreon yeah, we're, com we're forward still slash looking. DP. Oh, sorry. Shut but, up, Scotty. Shut up. But she don't come there and whoop your ass again. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say we still haven't figured out Android yet, uh, so we're still looking into that. But iTunes obviously is pretty. Uh, I don't know if it's pretty easy to implement, but we'll yes. figure it. We'll figure it out. It's fairly simple. It's very simple. Okay, yeah. there you go. Then should be pretty quick. So that'll be coming soon. Yeah, Ben just died of AIDS. Oh, and then you said the shirts sad. were back on sale. The shirts are now back on sale. Let's take a look here. Yeah, enough of you guys uh, pre-ordered them, so now it's back on sale. Hey, 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 hey. Smoke pan every day. Yeah, so for the next nine days. Yeah. And there's a link in the description below. Telling all y'all it's a sabotage. <laughs> That's unrelated. Yeah, very unrelated. You suck, TJ. Yeah. So anything else you want to get to before we move on here? Any oh, other no. announcements of any I'm sort? Oh. Kick Scotty in the face. Come do it then, pussy. You're too far. I'm lazy. I'll come, I'll come kick you in the face, TJ. All right. Oh, shit. It's happening. <laughs> you missed. <laughs> I didn't miss, TJ. So, Scotty loves to strangle. Don't fuck with me, TJ. Do you like to be strangled, TJ? Not by him. <laughs> not by him. <laughs> Which means yes. This is not slash. This is not ben. This isn't your slash fan fiction, Ben. Okay. You need to understand CJ, the difference we come up for reality you. and your fantasies. <laughs> All right, so here's the first video today. Like it. You like it. It's garbage. Hate it. Ugh. The Jesuit leader, he's found a montage, my Her orgasm head is with Brent very Spiner, round today. Her hair. And I'm mad at him. But I get there eventually. It's strange because I find Brent so exciting. And I can't wait to have sex too. with him. Yeah. And then when I jump into bed and begin the sex, the sexual excitement feeling diminishes. <laughs> it, it's because he's not there. It's because you're alone. That's why. 
I'm like, nothing's happening. I drew his face on this pillow. What's going on? Yeah. She probably owns like one of those Brent Spiner, like, not, not, not Brent Spiner, she probably owns one of those sex dolls and she put like Brent Spiner's face on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, kind of like that that picture, um, that crazy picture on the internet of the girl with Justin Bieber, the Justin Bieber blow up doll. Yeah. She has a Brent <laughs> Spiner blow up doll. Um, it has nothing to do with Brent. It's some sort of computer satellite technology. Oh. Zach loves to interfere with my sex with my husband. So, Ugh. so when we went to the Jesuit website, and uh, they were, you know, they had Gail listed there as the number one target of the Jesuit order. Yeah. Mainly, what they're doing is just fucking up her sex life with Brent Spiner. Mm, yeah. And the thing is <laughs> that, you know, Brent, Brent Spiner, you know, if if Brent Spiner and Gail had a child. You know, think about how much of a powerful threat that would be oh against my the Jesuits. God. If they're saying. number one and the number two, he would be the chosen one. one. Yeah, the chosen basically, one. Basically, it would be it would overthrow the Jesuits. The next yeah. Jesus, destroy Zach basically. Knight. Yeah, he would be wow. that. He would be their Neo, man. That's crazy, dude. Whoa. Yeah. It's telepathic sex that I have with him, with him, but it keeps Brent and I going until we can marry, like a oh, regular it's telepathic married couple. Sex. Jesus knows all <laughs> about this. Jesus knows all about this. Jesus is like, it's like a gossip rag. What's going on today? Oh, Gail and Brent are doing what? Telepathic sex. Gail and Brent are having telepathic sex. I think there needs to be a folk band based around the Church of Gail that just tells the stories, you know? If that happened just because you said that, that would be amazing. It should. If someday that, that comes to pass. It needs lyrics like we're like... You know, just think about like a song about Zack Knight and how disrupting he, yeah. <laughs> Brent Spiner and Gail's telekinetic sex to prevent them from conceiving the one, the one, the chosen one, the one, the one. The one. The one. It was always you know, the he, chosen one, and then the Matrix came out, and they're like, "Fuck it, it's just the one." We'll, told we'll me we'll let you decide whether he's Brent chosen and I or not. Are married, that Zach will never be able to interfere with my orgasms ever again. <laughs> all, Ugh. all our orgasms. You know, it's funny. She watches our videos because sometimes people send them to her, which, by the way, I don't condone any communication with her. We have fun watching her videos. I don't condone anyone bothering her whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. yeah Same here. Of course. Yeah. Uh, but I would say that goes for almost all of our guests, except yeah. for the ones who are not, you know, I mean, well, I don't, I, there's a distinction between someone who is just like a harmless nut raving on the street corner. Oh, uh, gee, man. And yeah, or Gail here uh, and someone who's just like an asshole, like, I don't know, Stephen Molnir, for instance. No, no, no. Yeah, or Stephen Steven Manure. Manure. No. Stephanie Manure. Stephanie Manure. Stephon Manure. Oh, Stephanie, you guys are even taking away his masculinity, I see. But anyway, some people did send her some of our videos, and she said TJ's a liar and that he's not really Zack Knight, which well, was Well, of course funny. she would say that. I but, mean, but she calls us filthy perverts, but listen to the shit she says. It's I like, know. what? It's pretty funny if anyone uh, it's, it's if anyone else is sexual it's like oh man then what a bunch of pervs but 90% of her videos are like yeah there's and the fucking Brent Spiner and yes. their penises oh. fell off and Matthew McConaughey had a vagina Oh no no rem remember and the, they were raped by 200, 200 Jesuits men. yeah 200 men apiece and their the sperm was like messing up their digestive systems <laughs> yeah but we're pervs but we're the pervs right not her no she's just recounting facts so she's of the clearly world completely and utterly perverted are going to be awesome. And, and there's millennium. nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. But Zach Knight. It's hypocritical. Who is Satan incarnate. That Satan sounds like in, me. In and out of him at will. Yeah. Hmm? And because Satan invented the computer, he's able to snoop on what? Well, Hold on. What are you sitting in front of right now? Or is it just like your iPad? The devil box. Or is the iPad not considered a computer too? To you? It is most certainly a computer. Well, I, well I'm, I'm talking about for her. She's just staring into a rock right now. <laughs> It it operates purely on faith. It's like the Jesus computer is a work. tool of Satan. It's like then why are you using one? Said Satan invented the computer. 
I understand that. I'm saying, but like, if it's a tool of Satan, because obviously if he invented it, it's, it's, his, it's his tool. Well, then why is she using it? Maybe, maybe she's come to some rationalization of why, even though it's his tool, it can be used against him or something. That I don't make know. Sense. Nah, that's garbage. Respondents, and he posts it publicly out of context. I would like to state for those who view the latest stuff, private matters that he's putting up at Crazy Gale. That there's nothing wrong with a wife trying to accommodate her husband's penis for sex. And now let's <laughs> sure. get on to the really important Except issue Except you're not here. married to Brent Spiner. You know, once any woman reaches 300 pounds, their farts become toxic. <laughs> what? True. <laughs> Very true. What the fuck is... What? This is just so, like... Oh. It's like non sequitur, just like it's oh. all over the fucking place. Fuck. I just got so dizzy from, from laughing at that shit. I felt like I was going to pass out. That'd be pretty awesome. Gail, fuck it. Oh, I, I don't know, TJ. I don't know. You know what? You say Gail's ben harmless. I don't know. Gail fucking might kill Ben. Shh. He'll die of laughter. He'll look. Ah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Ben's Obese gone. Obese men don't have the same farts as women. <laughs> right. And their farts, though disgusting, um, are not toxic. How did we get on the subject of farts? <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea. This does not even make any fucking sense at this point. You know who I actually want to see Gail with is um the uh, Alexis something or another who? woman. Oh, oh, weigh over three hundred pounds to wear a butt plug to prevent them from releasing their toxic and explosive farts. A lot of obese women are exploding. Yeah. Uh, um. No. It's Wrong. almost it's almost like become a George Carlin bit you, at this you, point. You know, people can burp. Um, no one's gonna put a butt plug up their ass so long. If they have to really have to fart, they're gonna take it out. It's like was there was there like a fucking shock collar on there? They take it out, their head explodes. I mean, this is just garbage. This is this is just ramblings of a lunatic at this point. I love that this, this is a law that's apparently been enacted in America. I was yeah. not aware of this law. <laughs> Farts can start fires. The fire at the West Texas fertilizer plant was ignited because obese Ludmila Putin let out a fart there. She did it on purpose, too. <laughs> These obese women's deadly farts contain toxic gases that can cause <laughs> mental retardation. So right now we are experiencing an epidemic of mental <laughs> retardation. I can yeah. see that. Yeah. <laughs> it starts with you. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I don't know what you guys are talking about. This is, this is total nonsense. <laughs> I mean, like even for Church of Gale, this is like I think it's I think it's hilarious. I mean, it is, but at the same time, <laughs> it's just like who fucking th like it, it's it, it's you know what's sad is it's it's really creative in some ways, but then it's also just ridiculous. It's like who actually came up with the story? Like she spends all this like like how does she support herself? She spends all this time creating this like fictional character. I think Gale, I think. I think in one accounts. of her videos she talks about working at Walmart or something like that. Oh man, woe betide anyone that has to fucking deal with her. <laughs> Are you a Jesuit? What? Are you a Jesuit? Okay, Gail, just go over there. People who breathe in the fumes from these. If she was really clever, there she'd be like, "There's, there's a Jesuit discount." Oh yeah, I'll take advantage of that. Aha! I ain't selling to you. <laughs> Canisters in time to let out their farts. Um, these people are getting injured, they're dying, and a lot of them are becoming mentally retarded. These <laughs> women explode because they're forced to use these butt plugs, so the gas just builds up in them and explodes. And <laughs> this is because of the new anti-fart laws that we've just put in, into place. Anti-fart anti laws. <laughs> I think maybe Gail is from the future. Yeah, anti-fart laws. She is. She talks about starships and fucking... Right, and, you know, she's t she references <laughs> laws that none of us are aware of. The gas, so I suggested to Brent that we ship these canisters like rockets into outer space when they're full. What an ingenious idea. She may have just saved mankind. Yeah, it's pretty brilliant. So, I found... A video of someone who is trying to discredit Gail. That's so hard to do. Yep. Let's take a look. I'm here today to be a hater. <laughs> yeah. She, okay. First of all, she's wearing swimmer's goggles. So this is just 
This is gonna, this is just gonna be like Gale versus other crazy. <laughs> yeah. This this could be this should be a national sport. Just have two complete lunatics just have a conversation <laughs> with each other and then America votes on which one wins. Real Chana because I don't believe she's That'll really supplant American Idol quite I easily. believe that she's um an FBI agent. Right. So she's saying that Gail's actually uh, an FBI agent. The the uh, the woman here on the screen with the swimming goggles on. <laughs> I, I, I don't even get it. I, I don't even know why I try to understand things anymore. I get my evidence. Logic is not needed here. And the fact that she's amazingly lucid for being so delusional. Like she has, her delusions are fixed, but they make sense in a linear fashion. Um, it was several schizophrenics. And after living with them, I came to the conclusion that I am not schizophrenic, even though I use the term occasionally. Um, because that's what they've labeled me as, even though there are many different disorders that get thrown into the schizophrenia bucket that are not. I have a head injury, and that head injury makes me yeah, kind of like... Yeah, but you can't self-diagnose yourself. Reality. Sorry, that's not how it works. But, um, yeah. Yeah, this, you know, that's I, just nonsense. I don't, know why, I don't know why she would make a video and post it on the internet being so... I, I don't know. <sighs> I mean, obviously part of these people wants attention. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's the most basic thing is like... They kind of realize there's this giant tool they can use, which is, you know, the internet, YouTube, whatever. Yeah. And people will flock to this kind of stuff. Because, I mean, it's the same reason people, if you have the crazy guy on the street going, you know, I'm going to tell you that Jesus is about to come back and, yep. you know, tacos, or you need to worship Taco Bell and, you know, whatever. And be like, oh, let's listen to this crazy guy. Yep. It's just the same thing in the modern age. When I was with the delusional people, they wouldn't make any sense whatsoever when they were like that. They would be like... And there are monkeys on the moon splattering rocks, fiery dragons, and I want to go to cannibalism. And it just, it wouldn't make really any sense. Anything, and um, that's why I don't think Gabriel Chan is real. Yeah. If she were a paranoid schizophrenic. What is going on with these jump cuts? I don't know. These are the roughest too. jump cuts. First off, she wouldn't be making Everyone videos. feels like a Second slap off, in the she face. Would be more tense and more anxiety ridden. And she'd be hearing voices that would be derailing her speech. I'm not saying you can't be delusional. Everyone's delusional to some degree. If you open up an ordinary person, you find all sorts of strange things in there. They what? You yeah. open them up like what do you mean that like you rip them in half yeah. and you look inside like where's the crazy? Someone needs to <laughs> investigate. Humans aren't eggs. You can't just crack them open and then that's what you want. I mean, sure you if, can. If you rip someone apart or look inside, that they'll, they'll probably be dead. At You're the taking end. it too literally, Scotty. No, taking it too fucking no, literal. I'm not TJ. What's next? Uh, the next one yeah, this is, garbage. is someone who's actually been on, that that we've shown on the show before. Mm -hmm. um, For some reason, when you were like, someone that's actually been on, I heard you going to say the moon, but then you didn't. The moon. Yep. Yeah. TJ, the moon. You were right. We need, uh, we need an astronaut on the show. <laughs> Those are hard to come by. Um, all right. I'll just play the video. and you Do it. To our dearest and beloved leader, Thunderfoot, allow me to explain to you what it is like being a female member of your audience. Yeah. At first, I found you through Twitter when I began to make more connections online with YouTube Atheists. After watching a few of your Atheist videos, I was on board and I subscribed. Being a new YouTuber, I decided to make a video about feminism in which I discuss Anita Sarkeesian. I was naive to the fact that this action would incur the wrath of angry, hateful males who, rather than have any actual form of discourse with me, chose to harass me and call me slut, whore, or cunt. Okay, so yet again, it's a feminist saying all opposition to me is framed as they did not want real discourse. It was a bunch of assholes that just threw, threw like, exploited, you know, like, they cursed at me and they would it's so weird cause straw man me and just attack Whenever me. I see one of these feminist videos that actually allows comments and I go to the comment section, there's always people who are trying to have intelligent discourse with them. But apparently, they just have blinders on where, I don't, oh, no, I don't see that one. Yeah, I don't no see that one. Oh, this one says I'm a stupid cunt whore. That, ah, that. Ah. See? Look at my opposition. They're all like that. It was like the tweet and he just started like, uh, you out. just you just scrolled through several intelligent commentaries to get to that. Yep.
Yeah, they just don't acknowledge them ever. Like, and there's plenty of uh, videos to an industry Sarkeesian that are completely like, you know, I want to discuss the points of her video. They, they don't attack her in any way. They don't attack her as a person. They just attack the video she makes. I would say even Screenshot. Thunderfoot's usually... I mean, like, Thunderfoot, you can tell he has contempt, but usually his videos are just about refut re refutations of things she said. Sure. And, you know, the arguments he makes are never acknowledged I, by anyone who opposes it. It's always shit like this, like, oh, you don't know how women are harassed. Well, Think about how we feel, Thunderfoot. It's like, no, who cares? Well, that's because he's... Address the argument, yeah. you moron. Well, that's because he's successfully refuted them, and, and as opposed to coming up with a new argument or to explain why he's, like, you know, and refute his claims and what he's saying, they just find it easier to say, well, he's just a misogynist. I think, like, the feminist... Just tactics for debate are like, okay, Thunderfoot, make your opening statement. Okay, feminist, whine about it. Oh, but they would rave about you. They said that if I wanted to know about this liar who was trying to take their video games away, it would do me good to visit your channel. What if Men Acted Like Feminists was a video you made where you copied the style of feminist frequency and equated the violence against men in the film Kill Bill to the objectification Sarkeesian addresses in games like Grand Theft Auto where hookers can be made to fillet the player and can then be run over after being thrown from the player's vehicle. Stop. You have no... Okay, so uh, let me explain something. In in Grand Theft Auto, you can literally run over anyone. You can also kill people. No, at, at only land. women. You can kill anybody, regardless of who they are. And yeah, you can get a hooker to fillet you because that's that, what hookers do that, in real life. Yeah, that never happens in real life. That's remember. what a hooker is. Are you going to deny the existence of hookers or just say they shouldn't be represented in media or should they be uh, represented in media in such a way that it's like, you know, this is a flattering and respectful portrayal of the, of the, you know, the hooker. <laughs> Actual objection to the violence in Kill Bill. The it doesn't affect hooker. you in any way. You just try to make it seem as if it's a good argument for your audience members to recite. Here's a major difference between you and Sarkeesian. She makes an argument against a normalization of violence against women. Something she believes to be affecting society negatively. A a true called a hold on, shut up. It's called a claim. Yeah, hold on. I mean, like, look, video games are violent in general, and most of the targets of violence in video games are male targets. So, I mean, like, if you're going to say it normalizes violence against women, you'd have to say that it normalizes violence in general. And then we're just back to the same argument we had in the 90s about violence in media. I mean, I thought this was resolved already. I thought we'd moved on from this, this shitty argument. Oh, do video games cause people to be more violent? No. We've looked at it. It doesn't happen. And you exist only to thwart her attempt at this. You make arguments against her for no other reason than to reason defame the work that she's done. I don't want to hear That's about... Ridiculous. The only reason you exist is to refute people like Anita Sarkeesian. It's like... um. How I, I I'm pretty sure Thunderfoot yeah. was around before yeah. Anita Sarkeesian was even but also, being talked like, about. Why should he have not have the right to do that? Like, even if you think Thunderfoot is completely wrong, Thunderfoot's never called for Anita Sarkeesian should be thrown off YouTube. No uh, one, no one has. Not Thunderfoot originally went after Christians, like apologists on YouTube. Sure. You know, it, he doesn't just exist to talk about Anita Sarkeesian. He's talked about all sorts of people. He's taken on right wing politics. He's taken on Ryan Wiley. Yeah, the PC crowd. He's taken on uh, the creationists. He's I mean, like, I think he actually started in the earliest days doing anti Iraq war videos. Yeah, I think he did do those. But I could be mistaken about that. Anyway, her Kickstarter. Or how you are upset that she has not made enough films to satisfy you. Or how she well, uses other players' videos. recorded video clips. These things do not matter. They do whoa, not. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. So she claimed to play the video games, that she had bought all these games, that she was going to play through each game. And she had raised money to get And she had to. raised money to do this, you know, production time and all this, which is valid. You know, that's fine. People gave her the money. That's their business. But she used other people's clips. And that's not necessarily wrong, but she never credited the people. She never contacted the people. Can I use your game footage? She never credited them. 
is the issue. And she it also did- claimed to have used the, fo- the footage and that, w- that was her footage, which it was not her footage. Uh, also, it kind of brings into question whether or not she was playing these games in- at all. And if she's just using clips from other people's videos, what's with the delay in production time? Yeah, and there are statements on video made by her saying that she doesn't play video games. I mean, are you saying it doesn't matter that she was dishonest? I don't see how that does. I mean, like, you can't just say, oh, well, you know, she lied about a bunch of stuff, but that's really not anything we should that's discuss. That's immaterial. Yeah. That's immaterial to her argument. I mean, I guess it is immaterial to her argument, but it kind of brings in a question, you know, is she someone you can really trust for information when she just lies as a matter of course? Yeah, she's been. it's been proven several times Sarkeesian has lied, and it's not like we're holding her to some standard like, well, you know, everyone lies. But sure. But it's like... She's lying about the means that, 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 you know, it's pretty much she's made a career off her lies as the, as the difference. You know what I mean? Kind of like a preacher. Yeah. It does not matter how she spends her Kickstarter money, just as it doesn't matter sure it does. that you make janky science videos If she said that she was going to use the money to go on she, a cruise. She said, it just like it doesn't matter that you make janky science videos with your Patreon money. Like, okay. Yeah, actually, it, it, it's called, it's basically called integrity. If... If Anita Sarkeesian said, I'm using this money to go to Vegas and put it all on red, I think it would matter. If she's using the money just to fund her lifestyle, then it would matter because it's being dishonest. I want to know what's janky about Thunderfoot's videos. I mean, if you're going to make a comment like that, can you explain it? Or are you just, like, taking a jab? Why does she need to? Because, I mean, with basically the feminist rhetoric, it's just I made a claim and that's all there is to it. There's no need to prove it. (laughs) Okay. shows instances of violence against sexualized women and says we should stop this. Now splash some cold water on your face and move on. This video, What If Men Acted Like Feminists, was the first video of yours I commented on. You are making society take a step backward when you make videos like this. A lot of young impressionable men out there and you are filling their heads with hate. You are creating a, strong, a very man. large anti-feminist hate group on YouTube. That what was a my joke. Comment. There are 250 replies, so I won't go through them all. But- I mean, that's, that's simply just ridiculous. You know? Uh, oh, yeah, I was grabbing something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's completely and utterly ridiculous to say... I mean, it, you, you basically frame this group. Is anyone that opposed you as a hate group? Why, how are they hateful of you? We're, I mean, I understand there's people on YouTube that legitimately do hate these people, like Anita Sarkeesian and feminists, and just hate them just because, like, I hate feminism, I'm an idiot troll, and I'm just going to say this shit. Sure, there's people that do that. But, I mean, has anyone really made an attempt on Anita Sarkeesian's life? Have we heard, like, hey, there's a crazed gunman found outside Anita Sarkeesian's home? Okay, but, no. you know, the thing is, even if there were someone like that, it doesn't discredit any argument against her. No. I mean, I don't care. I don't it care. No, it has no bearing Look, on Look, even if Anita her. Sarkeesian was fucking assassinated tomorrow, that wouldn't mean that anything she said in her videos was correct any more than me getting fucking shot in the fucking face tomorrow would make me right about anything that I wasn't right about before. You know, like, the truth doesn't change based on whether or not the person telling it was or was not persecuted. But here are a few of the worst. They weren't all bad. Time Wolf says, good retard. Jude Herbert says, now Jenny McDermott, shut up, get back in the kitchen, and I want a nice chilled mug of beer with that sandwich. Okay, uh, if you can't figure out that that comment was like, yeah, a bullshit design dis- yes. to be that. <laughs> okay, Let's even say it, it isn't. Let's say the guy is serious. He's he's just really that's how he really Get feels. Get me a sandwich. Yeah. That like so what? <laughs> it's one dude. It's his opinion, and just like just like what the statement you made, which you straw man Thunderfoot, is still your opinion. You've made a claim. You don't have any evidence of this. You're just basically saying, hey, this is a hate group. They just hate feminism. They, they, they know we're right. They just won't get on board because they want to keep their little boys club. That's, that's basically the arguments being made here. Chop, chop, bitch. And then later says, I don't think there will be a lot of thought coming from this feminazi. Thought and corrupt females like this do not mix. Will Barker says, you are literally lying. This is bit for bit identical to those brain dead feminazis. So you're going through a string of replies to your comment and just picking the ones that you want to read. I mean, 
<laughs> but it's, I mean, this is the same. This is the argument we talked about earlier. Right. Look how look how stupid and wrong my opposition is. Therefore, I must be right. It's like that doesn't even hold up logically. My opposition is a bunch of stupid idiots. Oh, well, then your position must obviously be correct. No, sorry, doesn't work that way. Now, these are only a few examples. And as I said, the few at the beginning were not bad, but I also had to block and report an, a particularly violent user who threatened to rape me. Let me remind you that this is the first video of yours I had commented on. The other day, I made a crappy... T so she's saying people that comment on Thunderfoot videos are rapists, therefore Thunderfoot is wrong and an yeah. asshole. Is what she's well, saying. Hey guys, let's go comment on uh, some feminist videos. I'm sure that if we made a comment, even, it doesn't matter what the comment is, like feminists are a hate group and should be banned, you know, like or something like that. I'm sure most of the feminists who read those comments will go, well, that's their right to have that. And, you know, I'm not going to downvote that comment or really address it, you know, in any way. I'm sure that's what's going to happen. As we've seen evidence time and time again, when you make any sort of thing against these feminists, it's like instantly there's a huge backlash of people. You're a moron. You're a misogynist. You basically support rape culture. You basically support rape. You, you're a rapist yourself. Any, any sort of derogatory thing they can come up with. Two minute video regarding Bewildered Apes comment section, which you commented on. I then received a threat of doxing by a male user named Anita Bong Hit and was threatened by a man <laughs> named God-fearing conservative that he had trained his bulldog to kill people. And if I didn't apologize to you, that that would be my fate. He's going <laughs> to sick a dog. Oh, what on a you. legitimate threat. I know. Yeah. That's totally not just some dude being an asshole on online and trolling you. That's a serious guy. He's he's, <laughs> he's going to get his attack dog after you. Oh, yeah. He's going to get his attack dog. He's got a pit bull that's trained to rip feminists apart when he snaps his fingers. That's what, that's certainly going to happen very soon. Any minute now. Totally credible. So, I'm going to use your own logic here. If this hate group known as Thunderfoot wants to threaten violent attacks upon me for being a feminist... Then the only cure for so so you're saying this is a hate group and you're calling it Thunderfoot? Is that what she said? Yeah, I seriously yeah. can't even believe like this Thunderfoot shit. is the Borg and they're just his assimilated <laughs> drones. Must obey Thunderfoot. We are part of Thunderfoot's hive okay, mind. But but what, what she's saying is that he made this video and then they, they, she's she's convinced that basically that they are all convinced now they're his basically puppets. Feminist detected. Destroy. So destroy. She <laughs> It sounds like a, a vigilant Christian conspiracy theory, yeah. almost. Like, Thunderfoot makes hypnotizing videos to turn his audience into Most rapists. Obey, Thunderfoot. Yeah. <laughs> Their terroristic attacks is to be more of a feminist. It is... Did she just say that... Terroristic attacks, yes. She said that the co people leaving comments on YouTube is, is a terroristic attack? Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I always kind of thought of terrorism as stuff like Bombing. blowing people up and, you know, beheading people and kidnapping them and, like, taking them as sex slaves and stuff like that. Um, no. I, I never really thought of it as some, someone some, leaving some a asshole, mean comment yeah. on the internet. I, some assholes on the internet is, is the same thing. It's about the equivalent. I mean, if that's terrorism, then me calling someone an asshole is literally assault. Fuck, dude. I mean, there could be terrorism on the internet. Okay, if Thunderfoot made a video like, this is, this is this person's name, this is where they live, I command you all, you know, Thunderfoot slaves to go and kill her, and he actually had a cult of people who, like, would really do it, that's a terroristic threat. You right. You know what I mean? Not... He's never responded to this person, probably doesn't even know she exists, or just vaguely is vaguely aware of it, <laughs> and is now being blamed for the actions of some users, which have thus far obviously not rendered her harmed in any way, except, for, I guess, her ego. This group that you were a part of that is a violent extremist group, you mention YouTubers that you dislike in your videos, and you use active speech to clue your subscribers into just how much you despise your subject of disapproval. You say words like, feminism in a vile manner. You say words like social justice warriors with hatred. Words that in fact mean nothing. No, I would say that's yeah, just yeah. how he talks. I mean, um, I mean, how do you know? Are you not allowed to fucking like have contempt for 
things you disagree with anymore because if that like that doesn't really seem like an american idea i mean but the same argument she's making you could say that she has the same thing about these people like, sure you know she's calling them a terrorist group for fuck's sake you know i mean it's, it's like janky science videos yeah she's not she's allowed to do that but you know thunderfoot's not allowed to you know mock feminism or anything like that you make your janky science videos yeah, his, the inflection in his voice is offensive to me like, yeah you know why don't you just admit, like, like honestly, why don't you just admit they want Thunderfoot basically dead? You know, I'm not saying she's saying that, but that's what it sounds like to me. It's like Thunderfoot is irredeemable, uh, part of an irredeemable hate group and should be wiped from the face of the earth. It's, it just seems like nothing. This seems like just a nonstop parade of infinite butter. You realize, like, you don't have to be a member of a group to comment on YouTube, right? Like, you can go to any video and comment anywhere and say pretty much anything, and the only thing that's going to stop you are monitored comments and spam filters. Yeah. So it's not that... You, do you think the people that comment on Thunderfoot's videos are just like, they only watch Thunderfoot's videos and... Like, <laughs> the cult of Thunderfoot. Yeah. Obey. Obey. <laughs> Must obey Thunderfoot. Nothing wrong at all. Destroy you apply a connotation feminist. to that misinforms your subscribers as to their actual meaning. The men and boys that you are guiding are picking up cues from the way you allow your comment section to play out. You act allow as Allow your does. comment section. He has no control over it. I mean, like, you want him to moderate all his comments? Do you moderate all of your comments? She doesn't get enough comments. I don't think yeah. she gets enough comments to worry yeah. about. But, I mean, uh, let me explain something to you. You, don't, you probably don't understand because you've never had this many comments to deal with. But if you have a lot of comments, it's pretty much impossible to control their content even if you want to. And I guarantee that Thunderfoot probably feels the same way I do in that we're not going to censor different points of view. You know, if I see someone that's being like, act, oh. like batshit crazy in there, like, yeah, I'll fucking kill all you motherfuckers. Yeah, I'll fucking block that guy. But, I mean, you know, there's no, there's no way to just do that for every fucking buddy when you have such a giant comment section. There's so many people commenting. And you have a fucking YouTube channel to run. And in Thunderfoot's case, he has a fucking full-time science job to go to. That leaves the video there and walks away. But not because you don't want the drama of the YouTube comment section. Because you want it to be a violent place where people can practice hate speech. Can I ask a question? <laughs> what is... This is ridiculous. What? Not only... Yeah, I'm not even paying attention to what she's saying anymore, honestly. I'm just looking at the fact... What is with the background here? It's the kid from the right, Christmas story. Right, but why? What does he have to do with anything? I don't get it. I don't and it looks like he's like licking Talk the about back of her shoulder videos. to me, you know? Who's got is, the janky video? This is a janky video for sure, guys. Like, doesn't it look like he's doing something to her? It's pretty creepy. I love you. Let's move on. You want to move on? Yeah, this is garbage. Yeah, I think we've uh, we've milked like, this old cow. Yeah, I guess from something to talk about perspective, it's good, but she's garbage. Here's a crazy video that someone sent me. It's an eight-year-old's reaction to his mother telling him that she's an atheist. Does he cry? Yeah. No! What a god! Just leave us! It's funny because he has a lot of the same arguments that you'll hear from adult Christians. Christians. Yeah. It's, it's Why does he even care that much? It's like, what a little asshole. Dying and doing nothing nowhere. Why would a God do that? So there is a God. Christian, stop yelling at me. His name is Christian. Quit yelling. I know. How fucking ironic is yeah. that? Christian, stop it. Stop it, Christian. Why are you getting mad about this? Because why can't mommy? There is hey, a hey, God. why can't? He sounds like G Man. <laughs> it sounds like G Man with the with the uh, pitch turned up. <laughs> I think I think G Man has finally met his match. Yeah, that's what hey, we'll call this kid: high pitch G Man. Come here, come here. He's the white come G Man. Come here, no, chill out, chill out. Calm down. There is a God. Calm down. Why can't mommy have her own opinion on this? Well, then I'm gonna go to darn hell. Why do you darn think hell. I'm gonna go to hell? Because who told you that? If you were hell, who told you that? You. Who you told you that? that? Come here. Come here to me. Who told you that? <laughs> who told you? <laughs> <laughs> this kid is so Christian. dumb. Christian, you have to go to hell. <laughs> because you don't believe in God. Man, I would, if that was my kid, I would slap the shit out uh. of him. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, that's ridiculous. He's, like, a, he's obviously been indoctrinated. 
Yeah. So he honestly thinks his mom's going to hell. Yeah. And that might be scary. He needs, I don't know. He needs, yeah, he needs that. S- Scotty does not have any children. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably Ladies and gentlemen, thing. don't worry. Scotty does not have children. If I had children, so what? Okay. That's not child abuse. People act like it's like anything with kids now. Like, oh, that's child abuse. Send them to prison. It's like, give me a fucking break. Kid. Sometimes you need to smack some sense into some fucking kids. <laughs> Man, I thought I was the controversial one, yeah. man. What's controversial <laughs> about it? Stop not that you should beat yelling. Them. <laughs> stop getting so upset. We're going to stop talking about this now. Okay? Uh-huh. Fine. Believe what you want to believe. Okay, I will. <laughs> okay, You're good. You're going to hell. It shouldn't matter. It should. You're going to hell, Mommy. I hate what? you. Yeah, see, fine. Go to hell. See if fine. I can. You're going to hell. If I was talking to this kid, I'd just be like, there is no hell, so whatever. What? She's too dumb to realize that. <laughs> what did he say? He said, wait a second. What? Whenever you give me a name, that's what God named you. Uh-uh, that's what I named you. Huh? I gave you that name. Well, then why am I the same word? Why am I the same word? Name as God's people? Yeah. Um, because she That's just you. a name. <laughs> this is just a name. <laughs> it's pretty simple. You were named it's just that. just your name. It's kind of funny. He's like moving around and playing. Right. Why and can't the, you let mommy believe what I want to believe? Theism. Later on, they get into, like, talking about where the sun came from and well, stuff like that. At, at least his motives are good. It's like, I don't want you to go to hell. Yep. It's like, well, I mean, you give him that much. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. I, I wouldn't slap the shit out of him. No, when he gets right up in your face or something like that, it's like, you know, you need to, yeah. fucking, you need to teach him a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand why it's, like, such a weird statement to make. <laughs> TJ is not saying anything. <laughs> I'm not talking. <laughs> what? Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so um, you're, you're a, what? You're a total pussy, TJ. So, TJ, what happened last night? I, I I heard you won some money or something. Oh yeah, that's true. A bunch <laughs> of people have been writing me on Tumblr. Too. Yeah. Well, no, we actually we actually talked about this on the on the show. Is uh, I bet the Patriots would win the Super Bowl. I had a hundred dollar bet with Scotty, and I won. So, what exactly would you say went Man, wrong? Man, that was a bullshit play, dude. Doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're right. The outcome is the same, but that was bullshit. You you know it. Yeah. Okay, I know, okay, but do you, I know do you, it, but do it doesn't admit, matter. Do you admit the Seahawks probably should have won the game? There's no should. There just is. No, but I'm asking you. Do you think that they should have won the game? That doesn't even make sense to me as a question. Okay, were they not, were they not in a position to win the game? They had an opportunity to win the game, but you could say that about any team at any point okay, in the game. Okay, usually, it, it wasn't like they, were like, like they were like 50 yards to go. They were on the one-yard line. And if they had run the ball in, they probably would have been a touchdown. So I'm, I'm sure. Saying, I'm sure both teams made mistakes that you know could have cost. Well, that, them uh, obviously that decided the game. That was the most costly mistake. You know. Yeah, I would, I would agree. It was a costly error. It was the most costly. But we don't. Because we, that, because but that, I mean, like that's, you're that's you're, assume, the you're assuming you have a crystal ball into the future and you know what the outcome. I'm not would assuming have been otherwise. That. No, that's bullshit. I'm saying that it very well could have gone the other way very easily. Sure. I'm saying it wasn't. It wasn't improbable that the Seahawks would have won. The no, game. it wasn't improbable. But that doesn't matter because they didn't. Well, there you go. I mean, I, I, well, I've never disputed that the game that the game has been decided. No, I'm not decided. Saying. Yes, I understand that. I just don't want to make any concession at all because I'm afraid you'll be like, well, then that kind of invalidates the bet, huh? Well, there's no way to can yeah. invalidate the bet. Yeah, because yeah, the bet's over. The bet's over. You with. won. Yeah, right. you won, I won the, the bet. bet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's, so, there's no way to invalidate yeah, I mean, like, the bet. Yeah, like you sit there and say like Seahawks should have won all day, but they didn't. So fuck them. Fuck you, TJ. You don't even like the fucking Patriots. I'm not even a Patriots fucking fan. He was I'm all a winning money fan. <laughs> remember, remember how he was trying to tell Tom Brady to get gas. Tom Brady, so he, Tom Brady is pretty Tom awesome. Tom Brady, awesome, man. I sucked his dick yeah, once. Yeah, that's what it I sounds like. I sucked his dick. He's pretty <laughs> impressive, man. Look at that square masculine jaw on Tom Brady. Look at that. He looks yeah. kind of like Dexter. Look at that round ass on Tom Brady. Yeah, his ass is not that round. <laughs> I'm surprised you even know that. Yeah. I, I guess I shouldn't be. There's that. much rounder asses in the NFL. I've checked. <laughs> That's so weird. To think he is watching the game like, look, look at that guy's ass. <laughs> That's just uh, whatever. Never let that leave your head. Yeah, Scotty. never look at football the same way again, Scotty. 
<laughs> no wonder TJ always watches with a blanket now. <laughs> yeah. And, and a, a box big, of tissues. A next big to comforter him. and like yeah, the <laughs> tissue box. I'm cold. <laughs> that it seems pretty warm. Lotion. It's cold in here. It's ninety eight degrees outside. Well, no, it's football's during the winter. So oh, it's during the fall and fall winter. Fall and winter, yeah. So that doesn't make any sense as a joke. No. Wah, 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 wah. Fails. It fails. God damn, Scott, you got a bladder the size of a fucking peanut? Yeah, that's usually me. No, you didn't. You didn't drink nothing. <coughs> Let's beat that kid. No. <laughs> While Scotty's in the bathroom, we'll plug the shirt one more time. I forgot that I was actually wearing the shirt right now. Oh, yeah. So just stand up. Should I stand? Okay. Just put it on you and then, like, show it. Show it off. Do-do-do-do. Ben's wearing the fucking shirt. Yeah, motherfuckers. Yeah. Get that shit. Even It's so good, even Ben wears it. He didn't even realize he was fucking wearing it. So yeah. you know it's not just like... I'll just wear the fucking shirt on the show. He just that's just part that's just one of his fucking shirts, bitches. It is, and I wear it all the time. Yeah, so that's a good fucking quality shirt. Get that shit. I get one myself is in the description. There was one big enough for me, but there's not. There isn't one? No. Well, I could probably what how I could probably do like a three X, but I I really need like an L T because I'm so long with the torso. Oh, uh, okay. That makes sense. Let's see here. Why come you don't believe in God? <laughs> You're going to hell! You're going to hell, TJ. Going to hell, Mommy. Mommy, you're going to hell! And she should look at him and it's like, you know, if your mom goes to hell, you go to hell too automatically. Yeah, it's man. one of Jesus' rules. That'd be awesome if that happened. See the kid just cry. I don't want to go to hell. You're, you're going gonna to burn, hell. little Billy. So burn in hell. His name is Christian. Creed. It seems like a lot of conspiracy nuts and Illuminati nuts believe that the Super Bowl halftime show was an Illuminati ritual. Right. Oh, wow. They always are. This, I mean, like, you the know dancing what? Dancing palm trees and sharks were definitely part <laughs> of the ritual. You know what? I mean, they don't need to make videos about how everything is one of these rituals now because... I think their premise is basically everything like this is always an Illuminati ritual. So why they even need to demonstrate it anymore? It's like, okay, this is all Illuminati shit. Let's move on to the next premise already. Dictionary.com defines bread and circuses as extravagant entertainment offered as an expedient means of pacifying discontent or diverting attention from a source of grievance. The saying refers to the ancient practice of the Roman rulers to hand out bread and hold circuses or events, games at the Colosseum in order to keep the masses distracted and focused on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the origin of the word. Sure. Okay. And keep them out of the way and not paying any attention to what the corrupt criminal government officials were doing behind the scenes. The modern day equivalent of this is sports entertainment culminating in the Super Bowl. The when he said sports entertainment, it almost sounded like he was talking about wrestling. Right. Sports entertainment is kind of, that's a term that is used to describe professional wrestling now. Yes. So it's kind of confusing when you use that term talking about football. Yeah, because sports entertainment implies that it's not legitimately a sport. And of course, the NFL is a legitimate sport. Uh, and wrestling is not most important holiday in america the most talked about and televised event of the year as george orwell so eloquently wrote in his novel 1984 quote football beer and above all gambling filled up the horizon of their minds to keep them in control was not difficult 
Karl Marx, the author of the Communist Manifesto, considered to be one of the founding fathers of communism. Uh, <laughs> author of the Communist <laughs> Manifesto, considered to be <laughs> one, one of one of the founding yeah. fathers. No, uh, what? He's the <laughs> founder of communism. I mean, yeah, you might say he borrowed some ideas from other people right. and things yeah, like that. Sure, sure everyone's but... influenced, but he's yeah, he he is the founding father, the founding father. Yeah. Yeah, you can't really say. Con- well, he said considered to be one of. It's like the. It's it's not considered. You know, he it, is. <laughs> said that religion was the opiate of the masses, when in reality it's football. There isn't a more important event in the minds All right, of hold the on. masses. Oh, this is stupid. Because here's why. First of all, if it w- if it was really that important, then you wouldn't even be allowed to dissent from it. No one gives a fuck if you're like, I don't watch football. No one cares. Someone might be like, why not? That's about the most fucking virulent reaction you'd even yeah, get. Yeah, no one's really going to jump on your ass about, oh, you know, I don't really like football. I don't watch it. Or I don't, I don't like sports. Uh, second of all, if it was really this opiate of the masses that was meant to control everybody, they wouldn't just run it from fucking September to February or, Jul- or January. It'd be, uh, they'd be running that shit all year round. Football and even college football is just a money-making business. That's all it is. That's yes. all it is. And you know what? People have been playing sports and watching sports pretty much since human beings existed. You know, like we we can. There, it's not just. I mean, it could be used as a distraction, but I mean, there's so many things in America that are a distraction. It, it's almost a joke to say religion's not really that. It's like, um, yes, religion is. Religion but, is a distraction. Entertainment is a distraction. Sports are distractions. Plenty no, of things but, are, but, are but distractions. I mean, look, how many people have you argued with or seen on this show that are like, oh, you, you know, you'd, if without religion, you know, we'd have no morality. We'd have none of this. Like, religion is controls people more than anything. Sure. I mean, look look at ISIS. Look at all these groups around the world. Why are they fighting? They're fighting because of ideological differences, mainly uh, stemming from religious beliefs. In fact, the biggest conspiracy, the biggest scandal, the biggest cover-up in the history of America has to do not with the false flag attacks leading us to wars, not the, uh, you know, the, the false fraudulent premise uh, that led us to the war in Iraq and expanding it all over the planet as the Orwellian war on terror just continues to uh, expand indefinitely. No, it doesn't have to do with the Bill of Rights getting basically revoked you know, through the Patriot Act and through the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act. It doesn't have to do with the... You know what? I think this is like another one of these videos where someone gets on the the camera. Well, he's not on the camera, but he gets on and he's just basically like, how dare you pay attention to anything else when there's all these problems? As if people couldn't have this distraction and then later go on to think about other things. Like, no one, I don't, I don't think anyone, I'm sure this guy has a TV show he watches or a game he plays or something else in his fucking life. Other than just pouring over the news articles, trying to figure out what's going on in this crazy world. Okay, and it, it, it kind of ignores the fact that really in America, you know, you're 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 a pleb. You don't have all this power that's ascribed. Like you have this power, you can vote, you can do this, but your choices at voting are pretty much already decided for you. It's like you can vote for bullshit B or bullshit A or bull, maybe sometimes bullshit C. That's it. It's like we're plebs. We don't really have any control in this country, like, and you know why? Look at all the policies. You're like, most Americans are like, do you agree with this policy? Nope. Yeah, on either side, do you agree with them? I mean, there might be different solutions of how to solve these problems, but for the most part in America, it's all the same problems and all the same shit. And every once in a while, something gets solved, you know, but it's usually because, like, uh, it, you know, it's just gone one way. It's like, well, everyone agrees that this is okay now, or, or this is bad. You know, just absolute, out-of-control national debt no it has to do with some potentially underinflated footballs this is something straight out of idiocracy in fact deflate gate has its own wikipedia page it has a bunch of celebrities chiming in on it what do the celebrities think about the potentially underinflated footballs the super bowl the stupor bowl uh, oh really in- <laughs> stupor bowl i get it is just one so wait the deflate gate thing i mean like yeah that news story was kind of everywhere but there's been plenty of retarded news stories that were everywhere 
And it's not like the information that people... It's not like the important stuff that people need to know isn't readily available for anyone who wants to find it. It's just this is the shit that people want. They want this, some juicy, like, yeah, what's going on with this? My my favorite one of those stories ever was the balloon boy. Did you remember that? Yeah. It happened years ago. It was a hoax, basically. Yeah, yeah, it was a, a hoax to get publicity. Um, do you remember that, TJ? No, I don't. It was like... These, this family that had these hot air balloons called, you know, emergency responders in their area and told them that their son was trapped on this balloon. Okay. Was Someone on Twitter said <coughs> Marx co-authored the Communist Manifesto with Fred Friedrich Engels. Yes. So the origin is shared. So that's it's fair true. enough. But he's considered. To, it, my problem is with what he said, considered. And like one of the founding. Yeah. Fo- it just that term makes it sound like. There's a bunch, just like there was with right. the founding of America or something. Okay, I would say it's more accurate to say he co-founded then. You could just say that. Yeah, I, I have a copy of the book, and it shows like the part that Ingalls wrote in. So. I mean, that, 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 that's, such an, that's such an irrelevant detail. That, that's fine, whatever. You know, it's one of those things, like, I'm going to nitpick this, like, okay, great, good for you. Big Illuminati ceremony. It doesn't even matter if the halftime show, uh, you know, flashes some Illuminati symbolism. <laughs> Uh Because the whole production itself serves as an Illuminati bread and circus distraction. Can you imagine what would happen if millions of Americans would gather in living rooms across the country to discuss what we could do to reverse the damage that Obama and Bush have done on this country over the last Can you imagine if they did that? Okay, here's what would happen if they did that. Everyone would come to wildly different conclusions. There'd be a lot of ignorant jackasses with solutions that were totally horrible, and some of them would probably actually get traction. There would be different ideas about what should be done based upon race, income, geographic region, and it would be a giant fucking clusterfuck of bullshit just like it already fucking is. You know, the, the divisions that exist are not going to be remedied just because you get more people talking. Not to say that it's bad. It's a bad idea to get more people engaged and involved, but just saying, you know, just because you get more people does not mean you're going to arrive at an obvious consensus about what to do. I was to say that, and also, I mean, I don't know about this guy, but the reason we know about all these things, you know, these vi- the violations of people's civil rights... Are because of the media and people like Snowden and, and p- these stories being broken to the media. So at the same time, he's saying, "Well, the media is totally bad." Well, how would he have all this information? Also, why is he putting a video out and talking specifically about the Super Bowl to gain viewers for himself? I mean, he's doing the same tactics he's accusing these media companies of using. And it's like, oh, you know, I want more people to hear my message or see what I'm, you know, putting out in there. And it's like, what's wrong with that? You know, you're doing the same tactic, but then you're criticizing it if it's a large organization. Okay, look, I, I think we can all agree, Deflategate is. Oh, it doesn't matter. In the grand scheme of things, it's just a news story. It's a media bullshit story. Sure, but it's, it's designed simply that, to get eyeballs. It's, it's astounding, the entertainment idiocracy that America has become. Part of the reason for this is that the father of American football, Walter Camp, pictured here, was a member of Skull and Bones, the... <laughs> what? How, do, how does this even matter? How does this even apply today? It does. Oh, so what you're saying is is that he just knew. He, he had a vision that the NFL would be this huge <coughs> thing one day. Yeah, it, he well, had no fucking idea. This guy didn't create the NFL anyway. He's like a the founder, one of the founders of the game. That's what I'm saying, but he, yeah. had, he had no idea this was going to happen. Yeah, he had no idea that there's going to be a Super Bowl, this giant thing that you know millions of people would watch live and there would be this elaborate halftime show i mean so he could put his illuminati symbolism (laughs) in it secret society at yale university thought by the masses to be just a fraternity for rich kids unaware that people don't become a member until their senior year and that it's geared for a postgraduate life nobody pledges to join skull and bones they are recruited in fact, there's no alcohol allowed or consumed in the clubhouse of the society. What kind of a fraternity doesn't consume alcohol in their clubhouse? 
a very serious stepping stone to the you Illuminati. No okay, hold you on. Have no proof of anything you've just said. Okay, that's all. That's Any purely conjecture. And also, look, y y you don't have to believe that there's some e you know evil Illuminati conspiracy to realize that a bunch of rich people are going to get together and fucking uh, start establishing the business deals that they're going to carry on with throughout the rest of their fucking careers. That's what it really is. Look. People don't realize this, but there's lots of meetings where just a bunch of rich people just go and rent convention halls or just rent hotels out, and they all just hobnob and, like, make business deals and find out, you know, advantageous information for their business, whatever. It happens. That's all this is. That's all the fuck Skull and Bones is, is like... You know, we're all gonna fucking talk, sit here and talk about how we're gonna fucking climb into power... Yeah, it's not a conspiracy. They're not part of some secret society. All they are is very fucking rich, self-interested people who want to fucking claw their way to the top. They're not That's part of some secret fucking, you know, dark, concerted effort to do so. Who, of course, many people focused on the halftime ritual this year, wondering if Katy Perry will uh, perform an Illuminati ritual flash some Illuminati signs. Here she is, uh, the singing stripper, uh, literally dancing on a stripper pole in her music video, Dark Horse. Chosen, of course, to be highlighted uh, to promote her uh, just bisexual bimbo uh, philosophy to the minds of the masses. By the way, the NFL is a tax-exempt charity. Technically, they're registered as a 501c3 tax-exempt charity that is pretty weird yeah i, I, I really don't agree with that about i that don't is that true that is true that is true yes. that is weird yeah they're not a charity they're uh <laughs> they they make a lot of money people get rich i don't know they if they're there. technically classified as a charity but they are they are technically yeah they're not they're, they're a non-profit yeah I, I don't think i don't think that i mean that's the same designation charities get but i don't think they run themselves as or present themselves as a charity no in fairness to the nfl but i don't think they should be a non-profit the football games really serve uh, as a distraction for the masses, uh, like an animal <laughs> chasing after a laser pointer. Uh, meaningless and mindless. Don't these videos look a little familiar? I mean, don't we know someone else who makes videos that are very similar? No. To this? No. No one. With the, with the images and the, and the mouse pointer on the screen? Mm -mm. Never met one. Nope. And a lot of claims with no evidence. <laughs> nope. No one like that. I can't think of anyone. I can't like think that. of one person. Yeah, I mean, like, I can't think of anyone else. No. <laughs> no, definitely not the vigilant Christian. The vigilant who? I never heard of this guy. Oh, he's a member of the noble Christian yeah, Trooper Network. Yeah, yeah that's where no we know him from. The Christian Trooper Network. That's a huge network, yep. man. You see a lot of people in that. Let me guess. He's going to go, Hi, everybody. This is the Vigilant Christian Mario. And now, time for another episode of Illuminati Super Media Bowl Exposed. Hey, everyone. It's Vigilant Christian Mario. And you're here for another edition of Illuminati Media Exposed. Wow. <laughs> Ben's psychic. In today's video... I'm going to be doing my final video for the Super Bowl 2015 Illuminati Exposed video series. A I've series? Created. If you haven't seen the previous ones, I'll leave them linked up in the description section below. No I've done thanks. tons of stuff showing the uh, Illuminati symbolism even before the game begun, and I've exposed some uh, symbolism in the commercials as well. Mm. Uh, but specifically today, we're going to look at the just recent Katy Perry halftime ritual. It is very subtle, so you're going to have to really pay attention here. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, it's very, very subtle. Very subtle this time. It's almost like it's not even happening and you're just reading into it I'm, too much. Okay, yeah, guys, it's almost I'm like pretty that, sure, but not quite. I'm pretty sure that the dancing sharks were part of the Illuminati. I'm gonna throw that the ones there. with the big smiley faces? Yeah, they were. And they're like... I think they were trying to do a triangle, you know? I don't know, I'm just saying. I think that uh, actually um, the wrestler uh, Iron Sheik had the best <laughs> tweet about the sharks. Yeah, what did he say again? He said something like, fuck those sharks, I'll break their backs or and something. And make like them that. humble. Yeah. And look deeply, but uh, for those who understand the esoteric meaning of the occult and the world of the Illuminati, uh, you're going to see that these symbols were hidden right in front if you're of our crazy, eyes you'll agree once with again me. in front of millions of people as part of a massive ritual. 
So let's get right into it. Um, now, the first thing that I want to point out uh, when it comes to the symbolism is her suit. So as you can see here, she comes in and her, she's on fire. Her suit's literally flaming. So that to symbolize now, hell, of course, right? What we need to understand is we're dealing with a Luciferian cult right. that uh, is very esoteric with their knowledge. Now, esoteric means hidden. So they love to use That's symbolism. That's not what esoteric means. So anytime we see things yeah, like say, what gold... Is, what? So look, okay, th this is what I'm talking about. The, I mean, the main reason I even started playing this is because, look, it's the same fucking thing. The, the other guy was Mark Dice, who I think has been doing this a lot longer than Mario. But Mario basically just rips off Mark Dice. It's amazing that someone would even rip off something that's already of such low quality to begin with. <clears throat> but, you know, if there's a market there, I guess that uh, I can't blame the Vigilant Christian for for trying to milk it. Oh, TJ, see, this is why he is the word esoteric. This is the, the definition. Intended for are likely to be understood by only a small number of people with specialized knowledge or interest. Right, but he gave a definition of esoteric. Esoteric means hidden. That's yeah, like, that's, that's not what, what it means. Like, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that, but like I see why he he's so uh, in love with that word, basically. It's like only a small number of people who right. have this knowledge understand that. But he doesn't even know the definition. He's So, I mean, like that can't be it. <laughs> Because if, if that if he was just choosing it to stroke his ego, he would know what the fuck it meant. How I think, dare you? How dare you insult the vigilant? I Christian think I think he just I think he just heard someone use it and just like Ooh, yeah, I know yeah. what that means too. Oh yeah. I think it's so messed up that the vigilant Christian made a video apologizing for being a dick, mm -hmm. and then in the video said he would come on the show. And I got in contact with him. He canceled twice. And now he no longer responds to Mario. my messages. Oh, Mario. It's like, what? What are you doing, TJ? Good. <laughs> TJ's like turning huh. off the mixer and uh, shit. My headphones no longer work. I don't know what's going on. What are you doing, man? My headphones are... Fire. Broken. Dude, are they working the now? The floor is fucking made of wires. I'm trying to find the right one. The floor is made of wires. We're in the Matrix, everyone. These here's big clumsy ass feet. Unplugged it. Here's a here's a one minute long video uh, saying, did Obama kill JFK? Yes. Um, <laughs> obviously. I think I might have found a inconsistency with yeah. that theory. <laughs> well, in 1961, in Barack Obama was born. Yeah. The same year that John F. Kennedy was inaugurated as the first non-Protestant president of the United States. Ugh, how horrible. This Coincidence? I think not. Yeah. On November 23rd, 1963, God. JFK was assassinated. Good. Coincidence? Obama I think took not. Obama took Lee care. Harvey Oswald took the blame as the lone Obama gunman. Obama stooge. Coincidence? <laughs> I think not. For Oswald to have been the only shooter, he would have had to fire three shots at a moving target from a distance of several hundred feet in only a few seconds. His bullets American would have had to sniper change trajectory two. in mid-flight huh. and hit multiple targets. Some have theorized that there was a second gunman on a grassy knoll near the motorcade route. Records show that Barack Obama's mother had brought him to Houston on November 19th, three days before the assassination of his predecessor, in order to visit a pediatrician. Coincidence? I think not. How the fuck? What? Ugh. Could o <laughs> what? <laughs> Give me a oh, break! He's right. No, holy no shit! It's clearly Obama. <laughs> that's Obama, dude. That blurry blob yeah, standing there. That's definitely Obama. Yeah, he done cracked the case. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this is fake. I seriously I'm, hope this I'm is fake. I'm 99.3% sure that it the, is. The, like, what is it? There's a Bruder film, and he's like, this is Obama. It's like, there's no way. <laughs> that, that, that almost looks like a fucking post. It doesn't even look like a kid. I mean, obviously it is, but the quality is so low. That there's no way you could possibly show that that is Obama, definitively. Obama. Dude, what are you talking about? That's Obama, Obama dude. That's him. It's beautiful. Is that real? www.birther.us? Why don't you look? I'm sure it is. <laughs> There's no way. I almost don't want to know. All right, fuck it. Out of morbid curiosity. 
birther.us. You guys are afraid of the truth. It's down. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Obama, Obama must have taken it down to suppress the uh, truth. Oh, I see. <clears throat> we could probably look at it on a, like, you know what, uh, on Wayback Machine. We could see if they have any, like, screen caps of it. Guess, it's not worth that much trouble. Okay. You know how sometimes when we argue with people who want to use the Bible to discriminate against gay people and other stuff like that, you sure. know, we, we bring up the argument, well, why don't you follow the other stuff like the mixed fabrics and the shellfish and all that? Mm -hmm. yeah. here's, here's a video from a guy that we've played on the show before who's basically saying that that's, you know, an invalid argument. Right. Okay. okay. Interesting. If you have ever visited a university campus with the intention of witnessing to somebody, it will not take All long the time. before you run into this guy. It will not take long. <laughs> you run into this guy. So it's for these reasons that we believe marriage should remain, as Jesus defined it, a union of one man and one woman. Not so fast, preacher man. Behold, it is I, Horus, Egyptian god of the sun. And while you were busy indoctrinating these idiots with your medieval mumbo jumbo, I, Horus, was busy discovering a very ancient Egyptian scroll that will. What the fuck? I don't know. The I cannot believe this exists. <laughs> This is terrible. Skip this, Skip this part. This is garbage. <laughs> Shit, uh, what are these scholars typically equipped with to undermine Christianity completely? That's right. Logic and reason. Old Testament law confusion. Oh, okay. And what Sophistry. What? Oh my God! There's more. A meticulously researched source. Well, you see, preacher man. While it may be true that your sacred scriptures forbid a man from lying with another man, it's also true that they forbid you from eating pork or shellfish. And since your congregation feasted mightily upon a tray of bacon-wrapped scallops at your most recent potluckings, it appears you are all guilty of picking and choosing which passages. Why? Why does? Why does an Egyptian god have a German accent. Can, I, I have why do no we explain idea. that? Ben, why any of this? Seriously, <laughs> like, why <laughs> anything that's happening now? Why even single out that? You might as well At least the show is dead. accurately titled. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. My name is Horace. No, I'm quoting from Acts chapter 10. Are you familiar with the book of Acts or perhaps the book of Galatians? Is Horace in those books? No. Then they bore me. What? Ah, yes. The lack <laughs> of willingness of the atheist to actually, you know, study the Bible. Uh, what do we do with these canards? Hey, do you ever wear a blended fabric sweater? Hopefully not. Do you ever eat shellfish? Do you have a fence around the roof of your house? Those are all Old Testament laws. What do we do with those? Okay. So are we going to get to the... I have understood there to be three ways of dealing with those. Do those apply to us? Do they all just go away? Are we supposed to be keeping those things? Some people try to do that. What are the three historic ways? Number one, all, all Old Testament laws gone. Why? So all the Old Testament laws are gone now. Then why even have the Old Testament? And also, yeah. Jesus specifically says that that's not the case. He right. says, I've come not to abolish the laws of the prophets, but to fulfill them. Because of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews is about better. Jesus is better than angels. He's a better high priest. And we are living under a better covenant prophesied by Jeremiah, fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Therefore, the Old Covenant completely, every single Law, gone. No. Unless the New Testament says this one is still in place, or unless there is a principle from those laws that would carry forward. What sort? Okay, so here's so, the loophole to the. Okay, being wait a gone. minute. I'm not. So basically, we accuse you of cherry picking, and your response is to show us the bullshit criteria by which you cherry. The pick. rationalization behind the cherry. Picking. This is supposed to be yeah. some sort of refutation. Yes. Okay. Sort of Proceed. 
Well, anything about morality that is in alignment with God's character and nature, of course, which you of course understand, would still be in place. But the power of the law would be gone. In other words, you don't get punished if you don't keep them by the state. That is one way of dealing with all of the old covenant laws. And I'm going to tip my hand. I fall into this camp. I didn't always, but I think this is the best way of dealing with the Old Testament laws because of the Sabbath. Nine of the Ten Commandments are reiterated in the New Testament, but one, the Sabbath, which is why I believe we can worship on Sunday or any other day if we so choose, and we're not under all of those Sabbath Okay, rules. so would you go so far as to just like cross that off the Ten Commandments yeah. then? He would have to with his life. I mean, like, if you're going to say the Sabbath is no longer in effect, let's just chisel that one well, out and call it know, the Nine Commandments. Christian, well, okay, so the Ten Commandments are Jewish in origin. The, Ju- the Jewish Sabbath is Saturday, I believe. Mm-hmm. And so, so the Sabbath that or Christians is use is Sunday, so it's not even the same day. <laughs> I think the Jews' Sabbath might actually be Friday. Is it Friday? I don't know. It is Friday or Saturday. Uh, let's look it up just to make sure we're right. Ben's looking that up. Yep. Okay, so this guy falls into this category, but that's really, he's just explaining how he cherry picks. He basically said, he has this vague thing about, well, you know, the laws that are that seem like they're in keeping with God's character. So that's just... But it's in the very book that Jesus said that, like you said before. Right. He's not come to do away with those or supersede them. Like, those are all still valid. So basically he says they have to be reiterated in the New Testament. Okay, so that's fair enough. If Well, the, well then Jesus reiterated that everything is correct. Yeah, he did. He said, oh, I've come not to replace those laws, so that should is, mean is they're all still in effect. Is argue with the same words that he supposedly is the word of God? So but he, even if he finds some sort of slippery Christian way around that, which I'm sure he can because, you know, they use total and absolute sophistry at all turns. Sure. Uh, even if he finds some way around that, um, there's plenty of stuff that's reiterated in the New Testament they still don't follow. I mean, he says, oh, nine out of ten commandments. You mean to tell me that he follows all of the rest of the commandments? He doesn't covet anything of anybody else's ever? Never. He doesn't experience, so he doesn't experience the basic human emotion of jealousy. No. So he doesn't, um, he doesn't ever take the Lord's name in vain. You mean to say he's never said God, like, when someone exasperated him? Like, oh, God. He's never done that. He's perfect. Not one time? Well, maybe once, but then he repented. Immediately after. But yet other people are not supposed to sin. Well, of course not. And I mean, obviously, just taking one look at him, he hasn't given all his money to the poor. He hasn't forsaken all possessions and, you know, just wandered okay. around the land spreading the good He's word of Christianity. He's a very busy man. He's getting around to that. That comes later. The number two way of dealing with all of the Old Testament laws... It's just the opposite of this. All of the Old Testament laws are in place unless the New Testament says, so it's the opposite way of of, of dealing with this. They're all gone, they're all active, unless. Now, what's the difference? Well, when you bore down a little bit, you get into some difficulties with things like the Sabbath, some technicalities, which is why I fall into the first category. Now, the third way of dealing with all of these Old Testament laws is a system I'll call the three-column system. Some theologians decided when you take a look at the Old Testament laws, they seem to be broken up into three categories. The moral laws, sexual issues, how you're supposed to talk and think that seem to be in alignment with God's moral character. These are absolutes. Uh, okay, so hold on. Right, I'm already finding a problem with this. What makes why, why, why are the sexual laws necessarily in the moral category? category why couldn't you put them in the civil category oh by the way uh just just to let you know the sabbath technically begins at sunday uh, at sundown on friday night and then extends through saturday and sundown so it goes from sundown oh okay from sundown sundown to sundown yeah neat so it is friday and saturday neat said but then you've got the civil laws if you break this law under the power of the land of israel you get punished like this And then there are the ceremonial laws, sacrificial stuff. Why do they break them up into three columns, three categories? Uh, So they can do this fucking gymnastics to make it seem like they don't have to follow the rules in their own book? Yeah. Ceremonial laws, they read Hebrews and say, well, clearly they're gone because Jesus was the last sacrifice. But what about the civil laws? Because we're no longer Israel, they don't apply to us right here today. 
but the moral principles, they still do. Now, these are all three valid ways of dealing with the Old Testament laws. If he plays a cartoon, I'm, let's say, oh, okay, well, that's the end. So how do you feel about his rationalization for? I don't um, find, I'm not impressed. Okay. I so you can throw out all the other Jewish laws except for these. It's basically he, he's just trying to f he's just trying to give himself it's, an out it, for cherry more, picking. He knows he's cherry picking. Reading. It's more very selective reading and like saying, well, if it's not mentioned in the, if it's mentioned in the Old Testament but not in the New Testament, then do away with it. I mean, you could sit there and do the same list with like Harry Potter and shit. You could make it. You could make. You could. Oh, I'm going to divide the content into these categorized systems, and by doing this, I can demonstrate that you know Snape doesn't even exist. You know, it's just like, you know how they have, like, crazy fan theorists for TV sure. shows and, you know, fandoms and shit? This is just the fucking crazy uh, fan theories of the Christians. Here's why my cherry-picking bullshit is actually okay, because you see, biblical scholars agree that the moral teachings of the Bible can be broken up into three categories, and how they're placed in these categories is based on my arbitrary whim and gut feeling about how God would feel and what his character was like. Okay, so Sophistry why don't you just come on camera and say, hi, I'm full of shit, and then just end, and then you <laughs> no, saved us all a tremendous amount of time. Play some cartoons. Checkmate, atheist. Let's see. Shit. <clears throat> the beast is back. You're standing in the presence dope. of the beast. The beast is dope. dope. It's Joseph Strickland again. Yep, I'm making another video. Who gives a fuck? Not me. Anyway. Sure. Dope, bro. Before I start this video. Trolls. Which is going to be called Out with the new school School Hell yeah The word dope Is now owned by the Swag Corporation Yeah, fuck them Dope is dope Whether you Like it or not So go fuck yourself In every way Amen brother Even sideways Wow. Oh, even sideways. <laughs> the beast commands it. It must be done. I want to, you know, I, the more I hear, I watch videos of the beast, the more I want to just, like, see him, like, talking this hard shit to, like, real street people. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> that would be fucking awesome. The video would be titled, like, Fat White Kid Gets Knocked Out. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you see it on World Star Hip Hop. Now, let's get into this damn video. Now somebody decided on my Welcome to the anti sway Corporation video that someone put a fucking hashtag should I say two? Two. One saying hashtag out with the old hashtag in with the new. Yeah, dope. Hashtag this video is dope. Let me fucking reverse that for you motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's so Don't intimidating. Fuck I'm afraid. With the I'm beast. Afraid. <laughs> He's always talking so hard in every it's video. It's hard to even, you know, watch him because you feel scared, you know? Dude, I'm fucking... You feel like he's right in your face threatening you, you know, because Brock of the intensity, Lesner, man. Brock Lesnar has not yet responded to all the tweets, so it makes me think he might be shaking in his fucking yeah, Brock Lesnar is fears the beast, Brock Lesnar saw the beast and was like, fuck this, they don't yeah. pay me enough. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag out with the new Hashtag in with the old What? Yep. There you go Now The purpose of this video He's is basically a Republican at this point <laughs> But why old school was better than new This is completely arbitrary Reason number one why old school is better than new school The thing is here that many people think he's like falling asleep in the middle of the <laughs> day. Fake new school is better than old school. Tupac stand now. Respect Lil Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> I 
thought he's talking about Tupac and Lil Wayne. Tupac's dead now. Respect Lil Wayne. Yeah. California. <laughs> nope. Dead or alive, I will respect Tupac to the day I fucking die. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, don't. It, he'll fucking Good do a drive-by you. on your ass for talking he'll, shit about He'll do Pac, a ghost drive-by. Motherfucker. <laughs> he doesn't even have to drive by. He just does a rollover. <laughs> he, he flies by. Anyway. <clears throat> now, there are going to be many topics on this video. We're not going to watch all yeah. of them. Yeah. <laughs> no thanks. Claiming old school is better than new. Okay. At first, I... I I forgot what the fuck he was even talking about because he was just, he wasn't I didn't know he was talking about music. He just kept saying old school and new school. <laughs> it's like okay, I don't know. He rambles. Yeah, the whole, that, that's all he does really. Here is one of them. Stop comparing Little Wayne, who was a fucking gay faggot, to a legend <laughs> like Tupac. <laughs> Who's a don't fucking do gay it. faggot? Now, Little Wayne is not dope. Tupac is dope. Don't you know that? Oh, I'm falling asleep. Oh, 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 I gotta get my monster God. energy drink. My blood sugar's low. Oh man, just need a couple cheeseburgers. Mom! My McDonald's run! Tupac, lyrical genius. Genius. Fucking He's fucking good. smart. Nope, not good. I mean, excellent fucking rappers. Excellent! He is the okay. leader. I would, I, let me just say, I would agree that Tupac is much better than Lil Wayne. Yes, me too. Sure. And and also, Tupac I think he's a better excellent. lyricist than Lil Wayne by far. Yes. No, but I would say that the Beast is not, he's not cognitively developed enough to really tell the difference, have, honestly. Have you ever seen Lil Wayne try to play guitar? No. Oh, my God. It's There, there was a little while there where Lil Wayne was playing fucking guitar, or well, I to. use that term very loosely. <laughs> he held a guitar while he was on stage and he tried to play this thing. Oh, it's so terrible. And anyone that's listening right now, uh, uh, you know, when you get the chance, look up Lil Wayne playing guitar. It is the worst shit I've ever seen in my life. I, I, I felt embarrassed and uncomfortable watching him try to play it. Like, what is he doing? <laughs> yeah, it's it's that bad. TJ, I... I could I could guarantee that I've never seen TJ even try to play guitar and I bet he could play guitar better. <laughs> that's that's a scary. That's thought. pretty yeah. sad. Yep. Of something special. He is the best rapper dead or alive. What? I don't know. I don't about think that. About, I don't think no. so. I don't know. I don't give a shit. As for Lil Wayne, fuck him. <laughs> He sucks. His lyrical skills suck. His mic skills suck. Lil Wayne is trash. We all fucking know it. Fuck his music. I don't care if he was in the 90s either. Fuck Lil Wayne. <laughs> okay, I can't it's, do it's it. It's Lil Wayne. It's not yeah, Little Wayne. It's not Little, little Wayne. It's Lil Wayne. Fuck Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne is a liar and a cheat. Lil Wayne. Alright. Yeah. There's enough of that. Okay. You can only handle so much of the beast. The beast is I can only handle so handle. much of this next person, too. Uh. Hey, YouTube. I am ready for Hillary. Now, I never thought I would say those words, but I finally think that conservatives and libertarians have a chance to win against Hillary Clinton. At first, I was worried that we would run this both so, way. Okay, I was kind of like, what? Then I was like, oh, okay, but it makes why sense. Would, why would you even assume that Hillary is definitely going to get the nomination? That's mm -hmm. not at That's all That's what they guaranteed. did last time at this point. Right. Like, you guys made this mistake before. We're like, we're geared up like, for we're fight planning Hillary. planning for Hillary. Then it's like, nope. Obama sneaks through and then wins. Honestly, they should not even attack Hillary until after the fucking primaries are over. If they really want to go against Hillary, they should not say a negative yes. word about her. Just let Hillary and the other Democrats. Democratic candidates attack each other. Right. Well, you guys step out of it, and then when Hillary gets the nomination, then be like, fuck Hillary. Oh, no, it's going to be a free-for-all. Yeah. There's, sure. there's going to be a bunch of people arguing. The but I'm saying if they were intelligent, the that's how they'd well, fucking sure, approach anyone, it. If they're intelligent, sure, but the Republicans are going to be in a free-for-all, too. Sure. Republican, like Middens, and we will. That's naturally part of the process. But we finally have a competitor with real solutions based in time-tested truths, and that person is Sarah Palin. 
Okay, Sarah Done. Palin. Can, Sarah Palin is the reason McCain got his ass beat yeah. so bad. Not only that, okay, Sarah Palin recently did a speech, which even most conservatives described as incoherent, rambling, and just nonsense. Because it, it, as bad as McCain is, he's more moderate than a lot of the like crazy Tea Party motherfuckers out there. And I think that he he got Sarah Palin to get more of the Tea Party style voters as well as oh, the sure. disenfranchised Hillary voters. So. Sarah Palin cost him yes. that election, if anything. Yeah, she's not she's not really electable. He may have lost anyway, but she made him lo- lose even worse. She, she I mean, like she basically put the nail in the coffin, dude. Yeah. Because I knew, I mean, like, even, I knew I knew plenty of Republicans, especially down south, that were, you know, they would have been on board to vote for McCain, but they were like, I don't know about this Palin chick, though. It's, she seems like a fucking idiot and a lunatic. Yeah, he, so. he should have picked another fucking Republican stew, right. you know, I mean. Should have done what Obama did and just elect some bland fucking lifeless fuck that doesn't really distract from you too much. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, I'm ready for Hillary, you're ready for Hillary, and I'm ready to spend the rest of this video talking about Sarah from Alaska and how, once again, the media is wrong when it comes to all things Sarah Palin. Shocker, I know. I like how the media is always evil and lying until they actually, it, it sides with what their viewpoint is, then the media is spot on suddenly. Well, that's not the mainstream media, Scotty, that's... Oh yeah, Fox. Yeah, media. Fox News is such an underground organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not mainstream at all. It's not like they're not available. They on love every, Sarah Palin. Any cable package that you purchase or satellite package is going to have Fox News on it. I think that actually, uh, except some, Dish someone, TV. Yeah, Dish TV dropped them. Really? Drop Dish TV immediately. Huh. That because I know that because when we we and Scotty watch uh, our TV, we see commercials of um, Fox News anchors being like, we've been dropped by Dish. They're trying to censor us. Tell Dish you hate this. Huh. I did not know that. Yeah. That's funny. Obviously, it proves the liberal... This weekend, Sarah Palin gave an amazing speech in Iowa, Uh, and I think it's precursor to a historic campaign that will eventually lead to her becoming... Wait a minute. The, the, The retarded, rambling speech that was basically incoherent was a brilliant speech? Yes. I almost, I mean, like, have you, Ben, have you seen, like, yeah, I watched it. parts Dude. of that speech? <laughs> yeah. State of Daniel needs to change his name to State of Daniel. I actually have it. Um, he really does. He's in such denial about the. You uh, have it? The, I have, like, a minute of it. Let's just show sh- some of the yeah. speech for context. Yeah, just, just show a little bit of it. And then we'll come back to this, or. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> he looks like he's high right there. Let's take, let's take a look at this brilliant oh, speech. My. must change for this cover our government look at it 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 isn't too big to fail it's too big to succeed it's too big to succeed so we can afford no retreads or nothing will change with the same people and same policies that got us into this this if the glove don't fit you must acquit Bullshit, dude. Johnny Cochran could have fucking sold this shit to people. At least. He might have been like, <laughs> yeah. and you see the know, Democrats, but, you know, like. I love how she, like, looks up at the government. Like, the government. Floating around in the sky. Crushing us. And, like, she hasn't worked for governments. I mean, she was a governor of a state. But, well, that's the irony. Like, oh, yeah. And she basically, even though she was elected, she she ended her, she basically cut term, uh, short her term so she could go make a bunch of money on a book tour. Right. And, and she did, like, reality TV and other shit like that, too. Well, of course. Hmm. Another Latin word, status quo, and it stands for, man, the middle class, everyday Americans are really getting taken for a ride. That's status quo. Thanks and to mainly to your white looking cronies. I mean, like, more the, so than anyone else. The Republicans, mm-hmm. what? I mean, like, they're, they're all of a sudden this talk about the middle class, like, what? What are you talking about? You, yeah, guys, you guys have always been the ones who avoided even like saying the words middle yeah. class and now all of a sudden it's like man all this time us republicans just been trying to fight for the middle class yeah. I'm saying, you can always point to democrats and independents that 
and fought for the middle class, or at least paid lip when service to it. we fight for states to become right-to-work states, we're doing that for the middle class. Well, that's what they claim. All, all these policies, <laughs> they always claim it's it's for the little guy. And it's like, okay, it has nothing right to do to with... Right-to-work is not for, the, mi- for yeah. the little guy. It's like, uh, no, this is for the Koch brothers and their cronies who are all billionaires. We who... talk about, Ben, it's a, it's a right to work. That sounds like a good thing. Yep. Yeah, and they have the right to fire uh, you, you know, for any reason the at the man time. can only ride you when your back is bent. So strengthen it. Then the man can't ride you. American won't be taken for a ride because so much is at stake. And we can't afford politicians playing games like nothing more is at stake. Oh, yeah, yeah. Also, she's she's not a politician. Other uh, other people are politicians playing this games. This is the Iowa Freedom Summit. Yeah. Freedom a Freedom Summit. What are these bullshit names she they give She just jumps things? from metaphor to metaphor so quickly that it's like, is this even... What is... How do these things relate this to each other? It's a barely coherent rant. It's it's just like there's so much non sequitur shit. And there's so many things that are so vague, like that could mean You gotta anything. get the man off your back, because your back is bent. It's like, your okay, back is bent, then you know the man is on you. What does that mean? The man. The man. <laughs> and the government's too big to fail or too big to succeed. I don't know what's going on here. I'm Sarah Palin. Vote for me. State, then, oh, maybe just the next standing of theirs in the next election. Okay. Keep going, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's it. Is that it? Yeah. It's over? That's all I have. I, okay. I just had like a short clip of it. All right. Uh, uh, I well, didn't doubt it. So them. wonderful. Yeah. I say we do not go back to state of denial. Okay. Here's um. Here's a video that someone edited that's Nancy Grace debating Nancy Grace about <laughs> weed. That's Eight. awesome. Nancy Grace takes a stand on the issue. The judge allows in evidence that Trayvon Martin did have marijuana in his system at the time he died. What difference, if any, does that make? It's because I've seen too many felonies, <laughs> and I don't mean pot sales or growing pot like this guy up in Connecticut. To me, it means that he is less likely to pick a fight with someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I... This just shows that she doesn't actually have any sort of like ideological consistency. No. It's just like I'm going to react to whatever situation is happening. She, she has a ratings ideology, right? Which like, is what can I say that will get ratings at the time? What is what does the audience want to hear? If the audience wants to hear Trayvon Martin's innocent, he's innocent. If he's guilty of sin, he's the worst thing ever happened. Right. I mean, Nancy Grace is just categorically full of shit. Is what this proves. People on pot shoot each other. Isn't it true that when you smoke pot, you just want to lay on the sofa and eat? <laughs> it's it's oh man this couldn't be any better this is brilliant this is, i know whoever did this is a genius people on pot kill families wipe out <laughs> a whole family the common uh connotation pot goes with lethargy with uh the munchies with wanting to eat with being laid back not with chasing somebody down, jumping out from behind bushes, beating them in the head till till they're pulpy, and and, and basically starting mortal combat. I know it, it, we were just watching a fucking video clip in the last show where she was claiming the only reason this guy killed his wife was because he ate a, a weed cookie. Yeah, he ate a weed cookie or brownie or something, and then he went crazy. But to be fair, Nancy Grace's, um, you know. Actually, her mind, all, of, her her much mind, all of her guests were against her. Her mind funny. changed uh, tremendously since this happened, which was what, I don't know, a year or two ago? Yeah, a couple of years ago. That's not what you typically equate with smoking a doobie. Yeah. I've got to be drinking booze, or I've got to be smoking, or I've got to be high on pot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. Here's another weird story. Texas school forces elementary students to pull pants down for poop inspection. Uh, okay. I see. Texas. Welcome to Texas. The most intelligent and progressive part of the U.S. They didn't inspect your poop. Inspect your butthole, boy. In Gustine, Texas, population 457, what off. happens at the schoolhouse affects nearly everyone. What happens at the schoolhouse stays Monday at the schoolhouse. It's causing a big controversy in this small town. I felt uncomfortable and I didn't want to do it. <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? Why ever not, little girl? Yeah, if someone asks me, like, show me your butthole, it's like, yeah. oh, are you trying to rape me? Get Bend the fuck away from me. Girl. Yeah, fuck off. Is this a Catholic school? 
and it felt like they violated my privacy. 11-year-old Eliza really Medina did. was one of about two dozen elementary students rounded up. Boys in one room, girls in another. She says they were ordered to pull down their pants and check them to see if um, they could find anything. I said, "That's ridiculous!" Wow. What What are they looking for? They're like looking for poop? I to guess to see if they don't wipe their asses good enough. Is that what? Yeah, what they're, I guess. Yeah. I didn't want to, but I had to because all the kids had to. I was furious. I mean, I was, I was furious. Why? Eliza's mom explained. Whatever for? They've been found finding poop on the gym floor. She can imagine the frustration, <laughs> but says even for feces on the floor, you don't partially strip search a group of students to find the culprit. If you can't do your job or if you don't know what you're doing, then okay. you need to be. How fucking stupid are these people? Put a fucking camera where this shit keeps happening. Yeah. That's it. That's all you have to fucking do. It's called a surveillance system. Why would you be like, drop your trout, you know, like, drop your fucking pants, like, put a fucking camera in the gym, or put two cameras in the gym. I don't under, like, even from just, like, a public relations standpoint, I don't understand this. How about the kid who smells like shit? Wouldn't that show you which one is the one that's spreading poop on the floor? But I mean, if you've got enough shit in your ass <laughs> that when you're sliding across the floor, it's like yeah, it's like streams. literally like coming out. How about the kid that smells like shit? That okay, might be the first indicator. It's obviously some kids doing this. All I have to do is put a couple cameras in there, catch the fucking kid, and then that's it's done with. It's like okay, it's this kid, it's this student. But not only that, but like what what were these schools thinking? Like yeah, we're gonna isolate a few students and have them show us their asses to check and see if there's any poop. Because no parent will have a problem with us strip searching their child unannounced f for this reason. Like, you, you know, because no one in America is weird about, you know, k people stripping down kids and shit. Yeah. Be fired. You, you do not need to be here. The superintendent. Maybe we could find a much better way to help solve this. Acknowledges oh. that oh, shit. He's the superintendent, isn't uh. he? The the guy in might charge be, uh, here? There's a better way to solve this? I don't oh, really know. Oh, uh, maybe we should have figured out I'm some just, kind of other solution. I'm just I part of the good old boy man. system. This is just this is the job I got because I'm kind of dumb. I'm here. Uh, I'm a superintendent of this here school. What's, what's my job again? Of this here I, I I ain't think no one had no problem with us checking the little behinds of the children. Yeah, but the children, they done shit on know, the floor. They need to be punished. I ain't, I ain't you know, I didn't know parents would be that sick. My son, if my son did it, I'd beat him. <laughs> there we go you know, again, Scotty. If TJ did it, I'd beat him too. Scotty, this is the child abuse episode. I know. <laughs> the official child abuse episode of the Drunken Peasants <laughs> podcast. I like how you guys remember any America. To children beat your as, children. As child abuse. Beat your children down. Making kids drop their pants to determine who caused a mess. That would be too far. It's not. That's that's not appropriate, and we would no not shit. condone that. And so you would take this very action. But Ken Ball says his understanding so far is that the children were told to lower their pants just a little. It, uh, just oh, a little. okay. Just a little bit. Never mind. They're making mountains out of molehills here. They were only asked to lower their pants Just a little bit. Just lower your pants bit. a little bit. Come on. Eliza Medina insists it was more than that. To right there, like, to where, like, your butt is. And her mother says even a little is too much. Well, um, duh. Wrong is wrong. So, some of these people that run these schools are so fucking stupid. It's like, this is their first solution to the problem. It's not like... Let's put a camera in there or something. Or let's lock the door so no one can go in there. It's Let's just fucking make the kids drop their pants. Got off just in time. Thanks, Brian. Starting tomorrow, a call to prayer for Muslims will be heard at Duke University for about three minutes every week. It'll sound something like this. Amplified. Yeah. That's going to start tomorrow, every Friday, 1 o'clock, at Duke. But is this religious accommodation necessary or just completely unfair to non-Muslim students? Joining us right now is this. Uh, well, how many Muslim students are there? And this is Fox News, the same people that complain that Christians can't pray in schools. Right. Which, by the way, they can. I, I believe, honestly, if it's a public university, that no no one should be accommodated. Is it a public university? I don't even really know. It's Duke, yes. I mean. Yes, Duke is a public. I don't think they I, I believe 
What, I'll did, look it up. Do they have like a church bell they ring when it's time for Christians to pray? I mean, I don't know. Oh, I don't know about the Christian shit. I'm just saying I don't support any of it. If, if I mean, school, like, if the school is doing it, if like a church itself, it just happens to be near there, rings the bell, or a mosque near there I mean, happens to do the. The thing, problem with this care. is that it's a Fox News story, so I'm really not sure to oh, what extent no, no. I even trust Duke it. Duke is a private university. It's a, well, it says Duke University is a private research university. Well, then they can probably just do whatever they yep. want. Then yeah, they can. Senior pastor of the First Baptist Church in I Dallas, mean, Texas, Dr. Robert Jeffers. He's also a Fox News contributor. Good morning to you, doctor. How Good many morning. Muslim students do they have? Uh, okay. I have no idea. Probably quite a few to make I'm, this yeah, actually happen. Yeah, I'm sure if it wasn't, it was more than a few if they wouldn't be doing this. You know what I mean? Okay, what's Duke doing here? <laughs> well, look, this is political correctness run amok. Look, I'm not uh, denying that Duke has the right to do this. What I'm saying is that Duke uh, is hypocritical in doing this, saying they're doing it for diversity and pluralism, when this very same university not long ago tried to cancel a pro-life event at their women's uh. center. And their hypocrisy underscores what I've often said. Those who cry loudest for tolerance are often the most in... The pro-life event, do you mean like an anti-abortion yeah. protest that's, outside that's it, of the women's center? Right. Of course. So, I mean, that's really not an equivalent thing. He made it sound like it was at the women's center I, you I, know i <laughs> i mean also i mean it's not like they're saying okay where well, they're gonna have a mass near the university and they ring the bell that they're now duke is disallowing that obviously if duke was doing that then they would have a ground to say well why can't we do both but i mean i just wonder like how, like to what extent do you have to be accommodated because like if you go i just wonder if like the 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 very clever florida satanist could be like okay but you know uh, you know, on Saturday night at 3.30 a.m., you got to play the fucking noise for the satanic prayer. And it's, you know, it could just be like some maniacal demon laugh or something, you know. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> I'd like for it to be a Skeletor laugh, like, you know. Yeah, something high-pitched like. and shrill. <laughs> That's awesome. Fuck you, He-Man! <laughs> tolerant people when it comes to viewpoints they disagree with sure uh, this is a travesty coming from a school that was originally founded as a christian school by methodist and quakers it was indeed okay so so well okay. it's, it's not that, anymore yeah they what is decided to accommodate what does that mean you know and that's their it's a private university so i mean that's their decision and that's i think los right. angeles was actually founded by like religious puritans yeah it was. doesn't really have much of a basis on what it is yeah, now like, hollywood was actually like a started as an like, evangelical community okay so they want to expand their horizon so to speak uh dr jeffers uh so yes. if they're going to do this if they're going to have the muslim call to prayer at one o'clock every friday for three minutes and amplified Let's just hope they give the other religions equal time. I wonder what time they're going to amplify the Our Father. Yeah, you know, I would love for evangelical you know, students... I would assume that there probably is a church bell that rings at some point, because that kind of seems like it would be the catalyst for this even happening in the first place. It's, it's probably not literally on campus but i don't know i i don't know at all we don't know and like the problem is when whenever you're dealing with a fox news story you have to take it with a grain of you salt, have to take basically. it with such a massive grain of salt yeah. because they're they just lie so yeah, much they, 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 they casually misrepresent what's going on so often it's like i mean in the way they're framing it it, it kind of seems dubious to me but i mean yeah, like, i, I, I just i don't certain. know like this reeks of bullshit to me for some reason i, I feel like well, something the source is, is why it, that, i feel like something is being left out at Duke to go to the university officials and say, after the Muslim call to prayer at one o'clock, mm -hmm. at two o'clock, we would like to get on the PA system and recite John three sixteen. I wonder how far that request would go. I'm sure, they well, probably you know ran what? it. That would seem fair, but then again, you know what happens on America's universities these days? We've got a quote. <sighs> yeah. From the, uh, you know, in all fairness, even more progressive-minded people like Chris Rock have said that the universities are like just a hotbed of like political correctness and like liberal progressivism run amok. In terms Many of them, yes. yeah, to some degree, that is true. Really, like I, I, I wouldn't Feminism. say it's, I wouldn't say it's that way at you know Brigham Young University or anything <laughs> no. like that. Oh, but like uh, the, the GTA, a lot of schools in like the Greater Toronto area are just like 
basically just run by feminists like and, and like feminism and like it just it kowtows so much to these like opinions of like you can't objectify this and you can't do this and you can't do that and don't be gendered and don't be, it's like it just gets to this extreme point of like political correctness yeah. so i mean and there's plenty of examples in the u.s too you know and, and it's just like you see this and it's like okay i agree with some of these ideas but it's taken to such an extreme you know, in the way it's done, and it's made to shame people, and it's like, okay, there's this rape culture, and there's all these other things. Like, I don't necessarily agree with them, you know what right. I mean? Right. Religious Life, who says this this morning regarding it, this opportunity represents a larger commitment to religious pluralism that is at the heart of Duke's mission. It connects the university to national trends in religious accommodations. You know... Okay. That okay. Seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. I don't know. Uh... I don't know the story behind why they started having it and I don't know to what degree, you know, what percentage of their student population is Muslim. I don't really think it matters. Like yeah. it wouldn't bother me at all. Honestly, it's irrelevant to me yeah. as well. It's like, you know, this isn't a public university. This isn't like, you know, let's do this on like, you know, in a government building. It's like, cause I don't agree with the, the pr opening prayer or opening anything. Mm -hmm. Just, in my opinion, just keep it all. What out. I'm guessing is that there's probably some sort of Muslim student organization on campus, and they do it from wherever their, you know, meeting space sure. on campus is. Whatever. Yeah. I who cares? It, it, it seems irrelevant to me, honestly. Yeah. It's like that's their business. They want to do it, and the school wants to accommodate them. Then whatever. Yeah. All right. I think uh, that we're going to take a break, and when we come back. We'll do Q and A. Drip, drip, not 
up knob on the top and all the stickiness And I know the satisfaction of a man Don't get me wrong, bars your eyes and baby does not turn me on Like when a man tries to beat me To drop my hope and close the van He tries to beat me, crack in the mouth, put in the mouth Sexual style, make scream out Then I'll be the hobo unit friends Talk about standing in the street, getting bent over a vent Looking forward to the moment experience Get the loop, dude, use it for the back in action Stick it in and watch the hobo's ass construction Hobo, hobo, hobo Shorting a boner for the killing of the hobos in the city of the boat Feeling good, looking out the window Looking down the alley for a dirty old hobo Yeah, I like the anal probe and chubbin' like the dirty dozen Says the well, ladies in the dress of babies, mama, daddy's cousin Make me feel like a hobo, time me down for anal probe And tossing over with blood running out my ass think it's funny, take a look at fucking bust you in the nuts Like you're my lover, fucking dirty hobo dick It's awesome like the suck drip Think it's my spike trip, the hobo probe with confidence Building up the mean or something, only way to fucking hobo, 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 hobo. Be 
my girl Tell me that you'll be my world Tell me that you'll be that slut in my dream That I wanted to be Tell me that you'll suck my dick Tell me that you'll make my quick Tell me that you'll rock my cock Like a whore and never stop Never stop Do that for Ben Never stop Never stop Yeah Da, 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 some people, uh, some people used to speculate that Ben was actually the singer of that no, band. Yeah, and I think he just disproved that pretty uh, dramatically. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I could, I could sing the song, but it would be pretty loud. Yeah, sing it better, Ben. No. Come on, scream at the top of your fucking lungs, Ben. Yeah, da, da. bang on the walls. Shake the windows, rattle the doors. Pussy. (laughs) You do it then, TJ. No. Everyone that's listening right now uh, that enjoyed the show tonight, feel free to hit the like button. It helps out the show. Gets more people watching it. And if you know someone that you hate, make them watch the show as well. Yes. At gunpoint. Tied up in a room. I don't want to watch this show. Their eyes all taped open like you're going to watch the show. You've got to watch it, motherfucker. These guys know what the fuck they're talking about. Uh, These are the drunken peasants, motherfucker. Fuck yeah, watch that shit. You watch or you die. Uh, you watch or you fucking die. I watch the show naked. Right. You gotta watch the show naked too. Hello, drunken peasants. Fuck you, Scotty. My fuck you, bitch. Is, if fuck you, you cunt. If you uh, an anthropomorphic animal, what kind of animal would you be? It's like a furry? Yeah. Bye. I'd be a fucking dragon. The first word of business would be burning your house to the fucking ground. <laughs> you wouldn't be furry, though, if you were a dragon. It's still you, furry. Yeah. I'm a fucking dragon. It's very loose. I have a term. It really is. The, um, the beast would be the beast from, like, uh, you know, uh, what's that fucking Beauty and the Beast? I don't know. I'd be like a minotaur. Bullshit. That's cool. not... TJ would be like a fucking duck or something. Well, a minotaur is just an anthropomorphized bull, so... Well, yeah. So, yeah, a minotaur. Fuck you guys. I think I'd be an otter. An otter? <laughs> One time we were at the zoo and an otter, like, poked its head out of the water, looked directly at Scotty, unmistakably so, and, like, started, like, screaming at him. <laughs> it was really weird. Like, almost as if, like, get the fuck out of my territory. I think he thought Scotty was another you're, otter. You're an otter. Hashtag Scotty is an otter. I think he fucking just thought I was there to fucking fuck it with his shit. It was pretty awesome. And that, like there was that a bunch otter of, pwned the shit out. There of was a bunch of people standing around too, so it was like unmistakable. People started start looking at me like, "Is this guy doing something to the otter?" Because like you it piece was of shit, it was running around there, the looked at me, and it was like, no, 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 like whatever the noise. Someone the even went to someone at the zoo and was like, "Excuse me, I think that man is harassing the otters." Yeah, then I had to fight several zoo employees. Yeah, to they the had death. they had nets. Jack Hanna, even. I had to fight him, too. Scotty had to jack Jack Hanna. Yeah. Did you see the movie Tusk, and what did you think of it? And no! if you like Kevin Smith, which Kevin Smith movies do you like? They all suck. And second... So do your headphones. Um, so what about... Kevin? Oh, uh, I have not seen Tusk. I like some Kevin Smith movies. I think my favorite Kevin Smith movie... Um, it, you know, and this is not like... It's, a, it's not like, a oh, this is a masterpiece or something. It just made me laugh was Clerks 2. I thought it was really funny. Garbage. I like the um, taking it back with the porch monkey. I actually knew a guy that was in Clerks too. That's true, you did. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I knew him as well. TJ's no, actual I favorite know. movie is Taken Two. That's not Kevin Smith though. There's a guy with he long dangly it. earlobes. Oh, oh, I know your favorite Kevin Smith movie. Clerks too. Oh, your favorite Kevin Smith movie. Oh, okay, you know there's a disconnect. Cop Out. Oh yeah, Cop Out's brilliant. Cop Out. You made a video about how bad that was. I did. Yeah. But I opened that video by, I, I, you know, kind of just for shock value, I said that it was worse than the death of my father because he died recently. And I didn't, I think people were, I, it was like, man, people are going to be really surprised if I go there. But like in retrospect, you know, at least the death of my dad only happened once. Like cop out is torturing new people every day. <laughs> you know, someone's just browsing through channels. They cop stumble out. upon cop out. Oh, Kevin Smith sounds good. Oh my God! No. My eyes! Ah! Cop out's horrible. They want to cop out of life. I think that was like that was the day to me. Kevin Smith died. The day Kevin Smith died. Like I believe that Kevin Smith died of a heart attack and was replaced by a Jesuit clone. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree. Which do you think is better, PC or consoles? 
depends on what you want. Yeah, it depends on the game too. Like, honestly, I I enjoy playing sports <laughs> games, and those are obviously better on console because. They don't even make a lot of them for PC. Yeah, whereas ben, I think, did you I think realize FPS is it's better to have a, 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 a you know a PC because there's a lot more versatility. Yes. Did you realize Ben that you're going to now get like five thousand recommendations for sports? Play this game. You have Xbox Live. Add me on Xbox Live. TJ mentioned one time like I have an Xbox for and like a thousand people were like. Please give me your Xbox handle. I'm like, TJ, please do not. Yeah. We'll be getting random messages all I day. Have, I, live, I, I don't... From I, Scotty I, Cena and TJ's anus I, and yeah. all that kind of shit. I use the Xbox, and I sometimes play... I would say games are probably like 10 to 15% of what I use the Xbox for. That's so true. But... You know, when I do play games, I, I like to just play by myself. I'm really not into the like, whole, like, online, interactive with other people. Like, that's to me, is, like, games... Like, when I was a kid, when you play video games, it's like, fuck other people, I'm going to play this video game. And yeah. I, I want it to still be like that. I don't want to, like, it's a new way to interact. Like, no, that's what I'm trying to avoid. <laughs> I don't know. Like, for me, it was fun uh, when I first started playing uh, Star Trek Online when it came out to get together with my friends and... You know, we all had our starships and stuff, and we blow shit up. You don't have any friends, Ben. You're right. We all know this. Ben's like, oh my god, you've cut me deeper, teacher. Ben's Ben's hurt, but we don't care. Yeah, I think we answered the question. Green headphones are not cool. Yeah, you suck, Stop. buddy. Individual and Christian Mario, how much thought do you think he actually puts in his videos? Like, because oh, by the way, at school as a joke. <laughs> Before this guy even talks, I see he's wearing a NoFX shirt, and it reminds me of this conversation I have with Scotty on the way here. Okay. Scotty's sitting there, and Metallica comes on, and Scotty starts remembering, like, you making fun of Metallica when you heard it was his ringtone. Yeah. And he's like, fucking Ben fucking doesn't like Metallica and shit. Like, no effects is that great. I should, next, every time he mentions no effects, I should be like, Rah. Yeah, I'm going to. Every time Ben does I'm the, the rah, 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 I'm going to go. Da, 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 da. That's okay. You know what? That's fine. You can do that. Of course it's fine. What are you going to do? Like, like bullshit. Body slam me? Fight, like, fight, 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 no. fight, fight, fight. Older, Ma- older Metallica's okay, but like newer Metallica sounds like fucking Nickelback that, to me. That is an older Metallica song. Yeah, I know. Okay, that's why I was like, you, well, you even said that. That's like 1980 or something. But of something. course, all no effects sounds exactly the same. Yeah, it, 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 no effects did by not their change. own admission. Yeah, by their own admission. Yeah, yeah, by their own admission. Yeah, yeah, they did not change. They started 1983. I mean, obviously, there there's slight changes, but not enough. You can't to make help it. but change a little. Yeah. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, they have to be some evolution. I mean, they're yeah. not going to do the exact. It's like, it's like they do the exact same song, but they all do sound but incredibly like, similar. But like, like Metallica's album "Load," that sounds like fucking Nickelback to me. Like, it sounds. It does not sound like 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 speed metal. You know, like no, like I, I don't think it sounds like Nickelback though. <laughs> I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that either. No. <laughs> I know you don't. My friend had three boyfriends over the six weeks holidays, and we went, oh, that's three boy." I mean, obviously, it doesn't sound exactly like Nickelback. I'm making like a... No, I, I, mean, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Boyfriends, six fight, weeks, fight, fight. three sixes, Illuminati confirmed, and Kimberly, um, and just silly shit like that. And then even to think, like... A, Does this have a example, point? For example, in America, uh, Australia, many uh, gays aren't allowed to get married. Right, but in the Bible it says gays are supposed to be put to death uh-huh. if they are gay, and they're clearly gone to hell. So why would the government, if it was controlled by the Illuminati, not encourage more gay marriage, since they're going to get more people in hell? Obviously, it's because it, these people are totally logical and wrong. Right, uh, I because mean, that's, none that's, of that's because none solution. of that stuff is true. So therefore, yeah. whatever, we didn't need twenty minutes. Yeah, I don't know. That was a bad question. Up. Sorry, yeah, dude. That was a bad question. Yeah, you fail. See, that's the caliber of people who listen to no effects, Ben. <laughs> you really want to be counted among their rank? You, 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 know, know? you know, in all fairness to that guy, a lot of people just get nervous when they get on camera for some reason, so they just go off on all these tangents, yeah. and they just can't really focus themselves. And You just... know what, though? I did laugh my ass off because the, uh, the why be an atheist guy, he likes no effects, too. There he's, you go, Ben. Yeah, you, guys should, you guys should go rock out together. Yeah, I know. I will. I will. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I like no effects as well, actually, yeah. but uh, not as much as Ben. No, definitely not. Not even close. Yeah. You're a casual listener. If it comes on, you're like, oh, that's cool. You're not yeah. like an obsessively go. I've intentionally gone to some of their songs. I think, you know, like obviously their their music has more of a comedic value to it than sure. You know, yeah. it doesn't take itself so seriously. You know, I would say. 
Yeah, a lot of pretentious shit out there, like Weird Al, you know? <laughs> like yeah, Weird, Weird Al. Al, so pretentious. It's not nice to see a band like No Effects just cutting loose and not being afraid to be humorous. <coughs> yeah. Well, I think I should move on because we already answered this question. I think Andrew Compeasants, heard from this question real quick. Um, no. I was wondering if I could get the tablature for the uh, the intro that you have on your... your no. Well, Ben, you're you the know, only one who can help him with that. Uh I don't think there is a tablature that's written. Uh, we have a link in the description for this video that uh, takes you to the page of the guy who made it, and you could probably message him, and he could at least point you in the right direction. Yeah, if he there gives a shit, but he probably won't. He'll probably be like, fuck off! Let's see here. Bloody winker. Is he English? Doesn't matter. Drunken peasants. I haven't I seen have this chick in a Drunken it's peasants. It's been so long. How have you been? It has is been. Is Scotty still a bitch for never coming to majority of the episodes? <laughs> TJ, <laughs> what, what the fuck? Is, Scott, is Scotty still a bitch? <laughs> it's like, what? Is people like to insult me. I know. Why do they it, do that? It's because, it's because they, they recognize their betters, and they just know they can uh, never attain such a status, so they have to take these little pot shots at me. I understand. It's okay. I know you're a failure in your life. That's okay. <laughs> You know, you can you can attempt to uh, equal one tenth, or maybe one one thousandth. No, well, that's still being too generous. Maybe one billionth of my greatness, but I doubt it'll ever happen. <coughs> there you go, folks. Hate what your kids. did you do to your beard? It looks horrible now. You look like a girl. <coughs> and Ben, you probably look Genius. more than half a million dollars in donations within Wonderful. the last few years. The most she has to show for it is her incomplete tropes versus women in video game series, which has been disputed. It's wonderful. Do you think she should be an example as to why sites like Kickstarter and Patreon need to change their policies so that you either have to pay the money back if you don't produce product within no. a set deadline? No. no. I mean, look, it's, it's a voluntary thing, and these people know what they're getting into. And I mean, I know it's easy to say that should we be more stringent. I mean, Kickstarter does have standards. Patreon doesn't doesn't really have any standards that I know of. I mean, they do have some terms of service things. And uh, Indiegogo doesn't really. They pretty much let anyone do a campaign unless it's like you know white hate rally, you know, support or something. <laughs> um, but I, I don't think it, I don't think it should work that way. And simply because how do you define what is you know the goal of something? Because I mean, there, there's so many different factors to, to what's you know. But here's the here's a here's a real big problem. She's saying, "Oh well, you know, we we need to. She needs to give back this Kickstarter money." Well, obviously, the people who are fans of hers are satisfied because they wouldn't have given her five hundred thousand dollars of additional donations over the last couple of years if they weren't. So obviously, they're perfectly happy with her slow rate of progress. Yeah, I mean, it, it's unfortunate that and it's their right to be. Yeah, fucking it's, happy it's unfortunate with they have such a low standard, but they do, and it's their money. So I don't see why they should be. I mean, unless there's a massive number of people that are saying this is a ripoff, which I don't really hear. I mean, I hear the critics of it saying that, but we're not criticizing the fact that she raised the money. We're saying, did she really need this much money, and what has she really done with it? Which is, if she's not already. Consistent work, because at this stage, that's five hundred thousand dollars down the fucking drain. It's their money. Yep. I mean, she's not she's not defrauding them unless she just never does it. I mean, if she never does it, then I would agree she should have to pay it back, but. If it takes her 10 years and people are satisfied, you know, that's what it is. Yeah. Hello, drunken peasants, and here's a bit of a dull question. Okay. Uh, do you think we've reached the point where we've created more genders than actually exist? Or do you think that has yet to happen yet? And more specifically, what do you think on the whole kind of existence of something like People a love to, like, micro-split things up, I've noticed. Like, there's, like, a billion different metal genres. There's about a thousand different terms for your sexuality you can choose from. There's about a thousand different terms for your gender you could choose from. There's, like, you know, we, all, we always, like, micro-segment things into, like... I'm not a dude, bro. I'm a bro. Sub. I'm not a dude, bro. I'm a bro, dude. Yeah, you feel me? You gotta realize that. Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to really gauge. It kind of just depends on at what point in a label are you willing to make a new distinction? Because, like, with the aforementioned metal genres, I feel like 
you know, every band who sounded a little bit different just, re- just you know, just like named a yeah, new genre there, of metal. I feel there has to be a criteria for classification. If you really can't demonstrate a difference between something that's already been classified, I don't think it should be classified as something new. But, like, some people are just like, well, it has to be because it's, it's you know, this radical departure from the previous then thing. They, then there should be some criteria that you can demonstrate, hey, this is why it's so much different. But if it sounds almost exactly the same or appears almost exactly the same or is exactly the same, then it's just semantics or it's just using a different terminology to describe the same thing. Right. You know. I basically agree. Should agree, bitch. Agree, TJ. Agree with your masters. Hey, drunken peasants. Hey. My question is, are there any you know, flavors of tea which stand out to you, whether they're as contemptible as chamomile or sensational as spearmint? <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. What, what an odd question. Well, she is English, so... TJ. <laughs> I know TJ's going to say, Earl Grey, hot! How do you like Earl Grey? I like black tea, yeah, I like green black tea, tea, jasmine green tea. I like a lot of kinds of teas. Yeah. So. Uh, chamomile, I like chamomile. I um, usually like teas that are, that have like peach I don't, I don't, added to them. The only too. tea I can think of I don't like is like Royal Bus or something. I don't, I don't, know what I don't, the I don't fuck like that. that. Is. I don't really like that tea. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I like orange pico too. Tea. <laughs> Obviously, tobacco. So, what do y'all think of Easter eggs? I like Easter eggs a lot. You know, you go on the Easter egg hunt, you he find said e-cigs, dude. No, I said Easter eggs. He said e-cigs. And then you go on the Easter egg hunt. <laughs> you try to find. You try to find the little, the little plastic ones or the, you know, the real ones. I like to find the plastic ones better because there's candy inside, and you can eat the candy. And it's like I, I kind of walked around, so I did some exercise. So, you know, it all justifies itself. Yeah. Uh, I smoked e-cigs for a while. I don't know. They always made my throat hurt even worse than normal cigarettes. And they're hard to recharge, and the fucking fact that the fluids they sell are totally unregulated kind of freaks me out. Man, I, I took a drag on one of TJ's e-cigs. Fucking disgusting. I'd rather just smoke. And I'm anti-smoking, really. And you can ask TJ. Like, I'm totally anti-smoking, but I would rather fucking smoke than smoke an e-cig. It's just garbage. I'm fine disgusting. with e-cigs. They're disgusting. Fight! 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 What? Fight! <laughs> Are you guys ever going to fight? I'm going to fight you because you're screaming. So I know, exactly. I want to fight you more than each other because yeah. you're a fucking obnoxious asshole. Yeah. All right. Well, then fight with okay. me. Okay. Well, me and better is like we I don't know where the weapons are here. <laughs> yeah. You don't even know where any weapons are. I don't, you can have a weapon. You're still handicapped <laughs> compared to the great TJ. Whatever, man. Smoke pan every day. Hashtag smoke pan every day. Oh, it's right. You guys don't have a chat anymore. Why don't you have a chat anymore? Because too many of you are assholes. <laughs> Just rub it in, Scotty. Just rub it right on in. I didn't say everyone's assholes. I said too many of them are assholes. Yeah, some of you guys are assholes. Sorry to say. What, I'm, I'm going to lie about it? Oh, no, they're all wonderful people. You're all wonderful people. Yeah. Every single one of you is good. I know, I'm an asshole. So what? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. Couple more. Yeah. Hello, TJ. <laughs> I am the Jesuit leader. You may address me. <laughs> Garbage, skip it. <laughs> I have so I'm not asking anything for this guy. This guy's an idiot. <laughs> what do you think is the best and the greatest of the DC comic book superheroes? No. Garbage. <laughs> garbage. Not answering you're it. You're getting punished for, for doing yeah. this. Yeah, you're garbage. Scotty doesn't say that lightly. Scotty no. rarely ever calls anything or anyone okay. garbage. He's shit. He's shit. <clears throat> Would you kill him if you saw him on the street? No, it's greater punishment to let him live. Ooh. I am anonymous, man. Anonymous. Hello. I'm anonymous. This is my question for anonymous the man. drunken peasants. We reject your question. Okay. Have a nice day. So, I have a question for you guys. Right. Okay. You stated that several times. Right now. I was raised in a kind of secular household. Wasn't really subjected to that. You! You dogma. need Jesus. Go get Jesus right away. And for my entire life, my parents have taught me that to respect other people's religions and so on. I never really 
got into until I started watching TJ's videos. You need then to I saw, respect everyone that at all times. This whole religion thing is complete bullshit. Anyways. Yeah, TJ's an anti-theist, for sure. When I told my mom that I was an atheist, too, she kind of freaked out. Because that's strange. She was scared that she was in some ways indoctrinating me into atheism, like she was indoctrinated into Christianity. Sure, I think that's a valid point. So I just want, even though this really isn't true, yes, I may have been predisposed to the whole concept, but it didn't really influence me that much until recently. So, I just want you to hear your guys' opinions of what I can tell her to help calm my parents' fears. And Why don't you just have a... They were okay, here's it's what you need to do. Why don't you just have a very... Smoke pain every day. Why don't you just have a very real and rational conversation explain to them that you came to all these conclusions on your own? Yeah, and I would just sit them down and be like, Mom, Dad... Obviously, they did influence you, your parents. I would say, no, you guys were not that influential. I'm fucking... I'm a teenager. Yeah. If anything, I'm rebelling against the things that you believe. So the fact that I'm an atheist, despite the fact that you guys are as well, should say something. You know, I came to these conclusions on my own. I've heard different people arguing different positions, and I've decided which one I agree with. But I mean, but I'm, I mean, I'm sure that having atheist parents would influence you in some way. I think no, it's possible Scotty. to say that there's no influence or no, no connection. There's no connection. Do you want to wrap it up? We could do one more. One more question. One more question. Who Golden will be? question. Hello, drunken peasants. Hello. Hello. Scotty, the great and powerful. How's it going? It is two slaves, Ben and TJ. My blessings to be upon How's you, it sir. Going? I have three. Finally, a smart for question. You. Fuck this guy. Question number one. Great questions. Let's hear what are them. your thoughts on the doomsday clock reaching three minutes to midnight? I Wonderful question. Think it's pretty interesting. Question number two. Have you what? I don't know what the doomsday clock is. Yeah. There's basically a doomsday clock. It's like these. Um, Scientists to be able to calculate like how close we are to midnight of like basically humanity and, and civilization ending, basically the apocalypse. Oh, cool! And right now it's three minutes until midnight, which is basically the end of the world. What would that be based on? I'm not sure the algorithm or how they determine it or anything like that. Because it really, we we don't really seem three minutes from midnight to me. I think that you think I think they use things like climate change, the geopolitical situations, ISIS, all these different things, all these things like play a role. Like currency and, and like the you know the EU economy being down and this and that and China's growth slowing and these things and drought you know what I mean they, use, they, they try to use all these different factors to try to give it a uh, I guess it's kind of like a they t they take all these variables and make it something simple for people to understand is what I, is what I think they're trying to do I think it's more like around eight thirty eight thirty is what you'd say p.m. <laughs> not a.m. unfortunately. They've never been that far off, I, th I think, since they started doing it. I think the furthest it's been is like 17 to 30 minutes or something. Really? In the movie Iron Sky. It's about space Nazis who hid in the dark side of the moon after World War II. They turn a black guy white. Oh my god. It's pretty fucking funny. It Question sounds like number... it'd be. It sounds like it'd be comedic gold, but if it wasn't funny, then it would just be So garbage. basically, it was Colin Powell. <laughs> Three. What are your thoughts on Universalist? Or Universalist? My friend ha is a Universalist, and it's pretty fucking stupid in my opinion. What the fuck is a Universalist? It's like Unitarian. Like Unitarian. Oh, like a Unitarian Universalist. Yes. Oh, okay. I, believe, I think that's what he's talking about. It, I mean, because I've never heard those two terms split apart. I didn't know that yeah. you could even just be a, a Universalist by itself. Um, I don't know. I don't really know enough about it to even say it's stupid or anything. Yeah, like I was saying, I, I don't really know. I think it has to do it. with like the universal truths that they believe unites all the religions. <clears throat> oh, right? so Isn't basically, it? It, what like the common threads must be true. I I think so, but I don't know enough about it to really yeah. comment. Yeah, yeah, honestly, we're, we're not knowledgeable. Enough so to the, really the tonight the drunken peasants ends on a note of absolute yeah, ignorance. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. None yeah. of us fucking know. Us. Why are you even watching this show? We're fucking idiots. Especially TJ. Please donate to us.
patreon.com forward slash DP. Yes. Get access to the private shows, which are legendary. And on the next show, we will announce when the next private show will happen. Oh, and by the way, this is maybe a little early to make this announcement, but we might as well make it early. We will not be doing a show next Monday. Next Monday. Yes, we will be on Monday Night Raw. Yeah. If you want to see the drunken peasants, you'll have to watch wrestling. John Cena will be in the ring and we will run down the aisle and whoop his ass on national TV. Just wait. Bullshit. Especially Ben. Ben's going to make out with him, and we all know this. <laughs> Ben's going to get on the I stage care and, and profess his love for Cena. Cena, I love you so much. Ben's going to be, like, be with me. And Cena will be like, Ben, I feel the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be beautiful. I feel the same. <laughs> I feel the same. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good night, everybody. Good night, Cleveland.